what's up? What's up? It's the art the most experienced with Deke. I'm Art the most, and that's my main man, Deke. What's good, bro? Man, everything is good, bro. Everything. It was a fire weekend. Shout out. Multiple, multiple things taking place. All dope. Got a chance to, you know, watch a little solar eclipse, a little, little, little special intergalactic, all that type of cool stuff. History type thing. So that was a vibe. And uh, now I'm back with the saddle with my dog, you know. A little bit later of a start time, but still the same groove, so can't complain. Got music. We got updates on beef. We got new music about to come out. So it's just been a, it's been a dope little little weekend for the boy so far, man. What say you though, man? I'm doing good. Huh? Yeah, doing real good. I like it. I so like it. talk to me about this eclipse experience. What'd you do? Man, so uh, first you had to have the little solar eclipse glasses, all right? Make sure you always have the ISO and them special numbers and stuff like that. They look like 3D go to the movie theater glasses, but it's like stupid thick, like you can't see anything like normal looking around. Oh, wow. But when you put them on and you look up at the sun while the eclipse is going on, all you can see is the sun because they're like that tinted. So it was like crazy. I mean, you're like walking around like, yo, I can't see nothing. Then you look up and it's like, oh, I see the circle. Oh, I see the eclipse coming. Now, granted, in Pittsburgh, we didn't get the full blackout. Some places got like complete darkness, bro. Okay. Which was fire. Like you watch some of them on TV. But we got, I think it was, it covered about 95% of the moon, or 95% of the sun was covered up. So we had a little, a little crescent and it got like shady, but it didn't get like dark, dark. But it was a vibe though, bro. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I didn't uh, have anything to do with it, actually. I yeah. boarded up my windows and everything. It's a smart move. Smart yeah, move. D- didn't want anything Be safe. to do with the side. That's because you texted me you. about it. Yeah. You were like, if you don't have like these special glass or yeah. something, and you look up at the sun like you don't during this window. Up. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I paid good money for this LASIK. And That's why I texted you that, bro, because I, I thought of your LASIK, eyes, bro. Man. I swear. Yeah. I thought of your LASIK, and I'm like, let's see. I moved the time back because I'm like, yo, I didn't want you driving. Yeah. It look it up. So I'm like, yo, I know you got the laser. Like, yo, yo, just make sure you put the glass if you go check it out, bro. So yeah. No, I had no desire to yeah. check it out. Salute at you, all. man. I yeah. was just like, you know what? Uh I'm just gonna chill in the Smart house. Smart move, bro. Hey, look, hey, look. Don't want wa- anything to wa- do with watch the solar it on eclipse. watch it on video. It's gonna be plenty of videos. People got everything. Yeah, you're good. I'm glad you ain't risk it, bro. No. Nah, we not at all. Well, that's why I told you, <laughs> you you initially wanted to start at five. Yeah. And I saw Online on CBS or whatever, uh-huh. KDKA, they said <laughs> that the solar eclipse on. time was going to be from like 2 to 4.30, 4 30, uh-huh. even though the actual eclipse was only going to happen for a couple minutes, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like Around four minutes something. Time. Yeah. Yeah, but they said it was going to officially be over, <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah. I, I have no clue what that even means. <laughs> so, so all they were saying is like, where the moon would be completely out of sight now. So like, okay. if you go out there right now, you won't see the moon. But yeah. like, when the eclipse is happening, you literally can see both. And you would see it like pass by, which was like nuts. Like I said, for us, we got to probably like that much sun left and then it started coming back. But some places, bro, it was legit like black. And you're like, dang, people was getting all emotional. I was like, it was cool, bro. It was cool. It was a vibe, though. Yeah, so they said it officially ended at 4.30. Yeah. You wanted to do five. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Please uh, say <laughs> my dog swore. <laughs> to get there... <laughs> Four five, I'd probably have to leave around four twenty five or something like that. See, or maybe I, around four thirty. Th- so bad I was like, I you know what? I don't, I don't even want to risk it. Like, can we just bump it back fifteen minutes? Dick, Dick, this how bad so I'm gonna be I on was. the road after four thirty. Dick, this is how bad I was when I said five. In my mind, I said Deke isn't gonna leave the crib till four forty five anyway. So we could only we have four forty five. Get about five fifty five would be good. Yeah, I like your energy, though, because, yeah, Deke did say you'll push it back, and Deke got here super early, so we just kind of been sitting here vibing out to, like, Drake's, Rick Ross, it's been a vibe, but yeah, man, shout out to you, shout out to the Eclipse, but yeah, it was cool, bro, it was cool, you know, but like I said, it's not for everybody, I know, like, let's see, me and my little guy, like, we were, like, heavy into it, wifey, because she got the glasses, she was kind of like you, she was like, yeah, I ain't really trying to go out there and mess my eyes up anymore, and her tried to put the glasses on, and it put, yeah, she was like, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, from two to yeah, four thirty, yeah. I was in lockdown, man. I was yeah. like, KK, our oldest, keep the sun away from me. KK, full teenager mode. She slept through the whole day. She was like, "Dad, this is cool." She went like the initial part when it was like, "Oh, you can see a, a glimpse of it coming in there," and after that, she went to sleep. Little A, shout out to A's. A's came out there at the end though. She, she was like, "Yo, I'm gonna come check it out with y'all," you know. But yeah, great. Me and Great, we was also like, yeah, we was ready to Neil Armstrong this joint, bro. 
we was over here. T- hey, man, what time is it? All right, hold on. Let me see. All right, measure that thing. What you see right here? Okay, all right. Hold on. Wait. Oh, all right. Bet, bet, bet. Now, when's it coming again? You said, how many more years I got to live? God, no. All right, all right, all right. Bet, bet, bet. I'm eat my vegetables then. Okay. But it was a vibe, though, bro. What it's, rating do you give it? I say seven. It would have been doper if we would have got the full thing. Actually, no. I say eight and a half. I, I was being hard on it because, yeah, you know, I'm just. There's a lot of hype for it. It was. And that was my. I wanted to see the full, like, black. And we got, like I said, 90% covered up. So, unfortunately, I didn't get the full experience like I was looking on TV because I was even trying to, like, not look at the TV that wife was watching so I could get it for myself. But, you know, it was still the vibe, though, bro. It was, like, super dope because I don't think I've ever. I know we've had one since I've been alive, but I don't remember ever, like, watching a solar eclipse happen, bro. Like, I don't remember as a grown up. So that's why for me it was like, yo, this is actually pretty cool to take this in, like, right now. Like, yeah. And they had my little man with me. So, you know, had a little father son moment. It was so sentimental. So it was good. Yeah. Does the path change yes. every time it happens? Yeah. So that's the thing. So they're like, um, so it just we, so happened we, probably like this, this area. Yeah. But like, gets the, it in the, in the, but clearest the total, way. but the total, like, total, uh, eclipse. Yeah. You had to be more like inland, like Indiana, um, like India. The Indianapolis 500, they host like a massive watch party. Okay. And that was when it was like full blackout. Texas, like Dallas, anywhere like central part of the, the country was like full huh. blackouts. We kind of, like I said, we were on the outskirts of it. So I think is they this said, the closest we've ever gotten. Is, I guess it's probably not. I say, yeah, yeah. For pets. Because it rotates. So it's like eclipse happens everywhere, but you typically won't see it in your lifetime unless, like you said, you get the kind like we did today. Or you got to, like, go to track them drinks and drive, like, all right, right. Where, where's it going to be? you it? really want yeah. to get that. Because there was, like, so many people interviewing on TV. They were like, yeah, we drive and we track these things. We want to go to, like, the total clip spot where it's going to be the absolute blackest. Or you got to go to the middle of the ocean or, like, North Pole, South Pole. And that's what you'll see them, like, way more frequently. But you see those extremes. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, Cool. But it was pretty dope, though, bro. So like I said, man, salute it, man. I'm glad I got to check that off the bucket list research, you know, tune in, tap in, have my little man family moments. So it was cool, bro. It was cool. And now, like I said, we in the bag here with you, so can't complain. And I see y'all complimenting the Pikachu shirt. I definitely appreciate you. I've been on my anime vibe lately, bro. Like, yeah. And Pikachu was like my guy when I get on my Pokemon and stuff, bro. Been drawing these little Pokemon, bro. I can't help myself, bro. I don't know what's going on with me. Right You're now. drawing? Yeah, I draw a lot, but it's like my my day. Yeah. No way. Yeah, 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 bro. That's something like my... we just learned. I, at no, least I just no, learned. No, no, yeah, this been oh yeah, 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 man. But yeah, you know, and, and I get my vibe, bro. So I've been on my on my Pokemon vibe. I just I don't know. I just can't help myself. It's weird, but it's a vibe though right now, man. So that's why I'm, you know got my Pikachu on. So shout out to y'all. Say so, yeah, bro. How do you draw? What, like what just, type of style? Man, I like you, the sketch, you go, man. You go black and white. Okay. Yeah, like sketch, pencil. man. Pencil, pen. Yeah, you know. Minimalist type dude, man. But like my baby girl, she's into like the painting and all that type of stuff. So it's like it's definitely went to her and expanded. But for me, I'm like super old school. Give me the notebook, pen, paper. Like let's just get it like that. Yeah, that's my thing though, man. That's part of my decompress. Art, music, and football. So yeah. Bro, I thought we talked about that before, no, though, bro. I've yeah. Never heard. Yeah, that. yeah. No. Cause uh, well, all right. Well, full transparency. Uh, even at GMU, right? We know I do a lot of like philanthropic stuff. So when we did one of our big donations to uh, put the convo to to go towards the new basketball arena down there, we also set up a scholarship for a person majoring in studio art because it's like yo, growing up, I remember people telling me all the time like it's no money in art. So it was like, dang man, I want to draw, want to draw. They're like, oh man, no money in that, bro. Maybe I vaguely yeah. remember you saying that. Yeah, man. maybe vaguely. This had to have been way back. Right, when we first, we first met. met. Yeah, because that's when you did the donation. Yeah, right. It was, uh-huh. it was like five it years was ago. right there yeah so that was a part of it but that was why because it's like uh i don't want people to always be like yo man you ain't gonna make nobody no arts ain't nobody doing that it's like nah bump that yeah we will so you know it's kind of a thought process with it but yeah bro let it get my draw on man yeah did you doodle during school yes yes that was something i would yes. do whenever yes. i'd be in class i would just doodle. i yeah. i would listen pretty well but i'd always be sketching in my notebook it took me getting to the league to really like change that habit it just started being like all right bro just notes heavy heavy on the notes because like i don't know coaches would get pissed heck yeah bro coaches ain't going for that <laughs> or when they go out there and they ask you that check and you wrong you be like oh all right yeah because you know in school it's like Maybe bro you, you can write down these plays and start <laughs> hey, look, drawing pikachu hey look you know how it goes in class you can get a c and you still good your coach ain't tripping let me get 70 percent of the calls right 
or a game day, coach is going to lose his mind. If I'm leaving. Hey, hey, coach, man, 70% of the time, I'm A-1 well with you, baby. Now the other 30%, ah, uh, yeah, that ain't happening, bro. So that's definitely what cut all that out. Just like, yo, if you feel like the urge to do anything, you better write a note. And it was like, yo, I'm just starting taking crazy notes. So then I have, like, binders on binders just, like, football notes. That's why I'm like, yo, if I ever wanted to, like, sell secrets, I got the secrets, bro. So everything. Yeah. But shoot, man. What's the vibe with you, though, man? I'm doing great. Oh, I like it. Hey, I was going to text you, but I, 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 I thought it would be a better idea just to save it for the show. Uh-oh, what you have? How about these Pittsburgh teams? Ooh, facts, facts. Ever the since you said to tank it, bro. In the playoffs Ever right since now. you said tank it. If the season <laughs> ended today, the bro. Penguins yeah. are actually in the playoffs. Yeah, ever since they you said that, They have that last bro. wild card spot. Ever since you said that. I don't know what it is, bro. Five games left. Yeah. We got one tonight, and Pirates have the best record in baseball yeah. at 8-2. and two. We're looking good, like, across the board, bro. They just beat the Orioles in a series 2-1, yeah. and the Orioles we, are considered one snow. of the best teams in the American yeah. League. Played in some snow and everything, bro. Tell you what, man. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I actually got out to the ball game, uh, the ballpark on Sweet. Saturday. Saturday, sweet. Yeah, got to the Saturday. I like game. that. I like that. It's fun. Extra innings. No, bro, crazy. That's fire. That's fire. How was the turnout, man? It felt good. The it was stuff, good. Bro? I mean, I mean, it was really good weather. Because I was say, because Friday was rainy, snowy, but Saturday, Sunday was clean out there, yeah. Got housed on the ticket fees, man. Uh, You know, it's the first Stop nice that, day in is Saturday, bro. You well, know that going to trip. I thought the ticket was going to be reasonable. It was like 25 bucks. I'm like, all right, nah, I can deal with this. Nah. And then go to actually pay. Hit him up. Over 40 bucks. Hit him up. With yeah. the Hit him service up. fees mm-hmm. and whatever the hell else they wanted to throw yeah. into the cost. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I got, Yeah, I want to go. So <laughs> it is what it is. No, I like that, bro. Respect. Respect that. Yeah, not much else, man. I, yeah, I'm excited about these Pittsburgh teams, though. Let's go then, man. Well, shout out to the Pittsburgh teams, man. Shout out to the Solar Eclipse. And shout out to just everything else is going on. And, and peace, all right? Because J. Cole, he's giving us peace vibes. So shout out to all the peacemakers out there, too, man. We ain't got no wrong, nothing wrong with peace. Remember that, all right? So with that being the case, since it is, you know, a little bit pushed back, we're going to go ahead and hop right on in so let's start the show like how we always do go ahead and let us know in the comment section where you are tuning in from so that way we get those big boy shout outs to start today's show and of course don't forget to hit that like button one time for the culture and subscribe if you are new to the channel speaking of new content i think we got some new content oh cordell patterson film session drop that's what it was that dropped over the weekend man so Shout out to y'all tapping in on that, man. But if you haven't checked that out, man, make sure you get, you know, your eyes on that, man. So y'all can see some of the stuff that he did, not just last year, but also in 2022, where he was a lot more healthy and just more utilized as the receiver as well, man. We talk about some of that in there. And uh, oh, and on the front end, let me say it as well. All my sneakerheads out there, if you're digging the shoes, y'all see the shoes we got in here and everything like that. The other YouTube page is kicking it with most. That's where we do all the shoe talk and all that type of stuff. All right, so, man, if you're digging the sneaks and that's what you're into, check that out as well. But other than that, this is what we on over here, baby. See you. All right. Uh, can you update me on this Cole apology? I, I saw that he Cole did apology. apologize. The yeah, J. Cole oh, oh, J. Cole. Yeah, so. Um, well, How recent was his diss to Kendrick Lamar? Bro, so he. Wasn't he, that something he, you brought up like yes. a month ago? No, no, not a month ago. No, okay. no, no. So he literally, Kendrick did his diss on Future's recent album that dropped two, two and a half weeks ago. J. Cole dropped a surprise, you know, EP last week. And just last week was when he dropped the disc. Then uh, this weekend, he had his Dreamville, like his big festival that he always does down in North Carolina. It opened at night. This is first time talking since that thing dropped. And everybody's like, all right, what are you finna say? Like, we finna go up. We finna let her know we got more smoke coming to you. Did Kendrick diss J. Cole? Ken- is that what it was? So, long story there short. There was some type of diss with Kendrick Dr- yeah, going so, on like a month so, ago, right? So that was the future. That was when he Kendrick jumped on Future Track. Okay. That was two and a half to three weeks ago, tops. Okay. Because Future and Metro Boomin just dropped the album, but their album is taking shots at Drake specifically because they all got beef. Kendrick and Drake been throwing subliminals throughout the past five to ten years. You just got to really dive into their music to know they shooting at each other like that. But when Drake apparently, you know. Been doing what he been doing. Kendrick took some type of disliking, and he said, "All right, on that first person shooter, when he was like, yo, when Ken, uh, when J Cole was like, it's the big three, da da da, he's like, nah, it ain't that.' So he went at Cole because he was on the record, mm. but he really was going at Drake the whole time. But because Cole was on the record, Cole caused bullets as well. So Cole responded, and it was dope. It was a clean little eye. Right, I'm gonna give you a little da 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 da, nothing crazy. 
Okay. But then Cole was on this like. So he didn't need to apologize, you think? Absolutely not. For hip hop, bro. Absolutely not. For hip hop, we're like, bro, stand on it. That wasn't even crazy. Like, bro, we about to come back with even more stuff. And they're not the violent type where you're thinking they about to go shoot each other up and fight. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I get it because we have had rap beefs where it never just stayed on records and it did spill over. We talk Big and Tupac. You know, you talk about some of the King Von stuff. You talk about some of these other rappers that have gotten to just altercation with other artists and end up dying. And you're like, bro, come on, man. It ain't that deep. So I get with J. Cole, you know, he just tried to nick it in the bud on the front end. Like, yeah, man, I feel even bad that I even said it. I don't even want that energy out there. So I was like, I get it. But for hip hop, bro, you're like, come on, bro. I'd rather you not have said nothing at all then, bro. Just act like you don't say it. Because you gave us the energy like that's what you or you say you the guy. He say he the guy. Drake say he the guy. So this the first time we got all three guys actually willing to go in there prove who the big dog. And he smacked you. You smack him back. And now you like, I apologize to smack you, bro. That was my fault, man. I'm wrong. I got to be better than that. You're like, no, no. This is what, we're, this is what we want to see. So it's like that dynamic. So as a man, you're like, I respect that you being the bigger person. You saying, yo, you was wrong. Don't put that energy out there. But as like the hip hop, the 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 seven five seven of me, I'm like, hey bro, you crazy man? What you tripping for, bro? Get him out of here, Kendrick. Empty the clip on him. Yeah, I'm like Kendrick. Go to the booth right now and just stomp on him. Like, yeah. So that's my dilemma. But shout out to all of them though, because I rock with all their music. So that's why I was like, I don't want anything to ever happen. But I'm like, none of them, Kendrick, J Cole, and Drake, none of them three are on that type of energy. Like, right? They're not on no Fifty Cent, Ja Rule. It ain't that. Yeah, it ain't no real. Beef, beef, yeah. Yeah, I would have never expected that from yeah. J. Cool and Kendrick, at least going back and forth at each other. Cause yeah. I, I thought they were cool. They are. Like, from what yeah. I remember, and that's whenever what J. I was Cole even back says in the that. day. J. Cole even says, he's like, bro, this is my man. Like, I rock with him. He's like, so I don't want this out there. Like, I'm trying to say this, but it's like, I don't, yeah. But we like, bro, it's hip-hop. Just play the game, right? right? It's hip-hop. The entertainment yeah. aspect of it, at least. It's no different, man. At times when we say you watch dudes play in the NFL, NBA, right? And we look like we're about to kill each other on that field. But then sometimes, bro, it ain't that deep. It's just we just ultra competitive in this space. But that's why when we're done, man, we're able to dab up. I'm able to see you out on the city. You know what I mean? I could be in your city later on. It's like, yo, it's all love. But in that moment, bro, I'm trying to take your head off. But now you do come across those Vontez perfect types, right? You do get the occasional Cortland Finnegan, Andre Johnson, where it the, spills the over. Taylor Lewan, TJ Watson. Right, Watt scenario. right. The Joey Porter delivery. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you run into that on occasion. But this ain't that. This group is like, nah, man, y'all ain't on that. Y'all just on some, like, you know, this is just highly competitive. But y'all are all at the peak of y'all, you know, of your craft right now. So this is why we want to see you. So it is what it is. Kendrick going to eat him, though. Kendrick is not about to play. I'm waiting on Kendrick. Kendrick will drop. Kendrick's uh-huh. not playing. You think? Absolutely, bro. Because Kendrick, you know, hey, Kendrick wants He can Drake. make fun of the apology oh, if yeah. he wants. Because Kendrick going to shoot at Drake again. Like, that's the one oh, he really so He's going to Drake. Yeah, he really You don't think Drake. he's going to go back at J. Cool? He, I feel like he will in the process of it just because the last time we've heard something has been from Cole. So we're still waiting now for Kendrick to respond. And Kendrick's supposed to be dropping some. So that's the part. Cole's like. just neutral. Well, he's like cool with Drake. Yeah, okay. but because they, they got cool the tracks together, it's like, yo, you were the track with him and you said my name specifically. Yeah. So it's like, all right, I'm definitely, and you wanted a word. So if I'm saying I'm him, you could get it in, you can get it. Drake just, he giving us IG posts. I'll be rocking with it, but Drake funny right now. Drake, he he dropped nothing for me yet. He give me, I hit you back, I'm a Turks little baby. He, he shooting at Rick Ross, he shooting at everybody, but. That one. I'm like, come on, Drake, bro. You can either go in Kendrick or you could go in Future or you go in Metro, which just right there. All right. He going to everybody else but them. So I'm just like, all right, come on, baby. I'm tired of liking these picks. Okay. I can't keep liking all these weak captions. Okay. I'm done with these captions, bro. Give me the bars now. I want the bars. Yeah. I don't think you can have the highest of expectations <laughs> for Drake with a beef, right? No, but he might give you a banger, though. It might be a little banger with a catchy little line. Yeah. Just give me a catchy little line. We going bad to bad. Is that a girl? Is that a world tour or your girl's tour? It's like, yo, it's just catchy. It's like, oh, I like that. Like, yeah, I just want something like that. You just want new music, at least. Yeah. Okay. And if this gets them giving me more music, then e- I'm even happy. more energy towards it, then I'm happy, yeah, bro. More creativity right. potentially. Absolutely. Put your heart in your craft, bro. Don't don't just give me that. 
rinse, wash, recycle stuff, bro. Oh, this is what Charles is like. Nah, bro, put something out that they gonna have to respect because that's what we like. So yeah. Well, thanks for catching me up on No that. doubt, bro. So there we go, bro. There it we makes go. sense now. Shout out. Shout out. So there y'all go. That was the update on that. And then we did have WrestleMania Q. Shout out to WrestleMania. That was absolutely insane. I'm still catching up on sleep from that. Yeah, bro. That was nuts, too. I know you ain't a wrestling cat like that. Yeah, I have no clue. WrestleMania was crazy, bro. We, 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 we got two new champs, man. Roman Reigns, historic, epic run of being a champion. Almost four years consecutively, man. Did come to an end. Shout out to Cody Rhodes, man. Did take care of business, man. We got The Rock out there. We had Undertaker out there. We had <laughs> Bubba Ray from the third from the Dudley Brothers. He pulled up in the building. Man, you had all the type. You had Jimmy. You got Jay Uso. Everybody was out there, bro. I'm just, it, was, it was across the board. It was fire. It was fire, bro. So, yeah. Shout out. But I, it, it was, it was man, don't look at me. T2 Chains was there. That, that's got to count for something. Snoop Dogg was there. That's yeah. got to count for something. Yeah. Meek Mill, I don't know how you feel about him at this moment, but he was there, you know. You said you lost sleep over the, how how late was this on? But it got to like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then after that, you know, you got to go back and watch the highlights from the basketball okay. games that was going on. Yeah, you're still hyped. Yeah, bro. Heck yeah, man. It was fire though, bro. It was fire. Like I said, it was a dope weekend. So, here we are. Now, can we start? Yeah. Hey, we, we talk well, about everything, but we're supposed to be talking about I bro. wanted to read this comment <laughs> yeah. first. What you got uh, for me, man? Rod Dallas says he watched the eclipse without the glasses. Oh, you gangster. He looked gangster. God right in his eyes. Boy, you gangster. Oh, you can have that. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. You can have that. No, boy, I look God in his eyes. Y'all don't want to do that. In fact, I went to the movies too this weekend, D. We saw Immortal. Or, no, no, no. We saw Imaginary. It's about a little imaginary friend type little crazy spirit stuff but the dad looked the demon in the eye he went crazy so after that i'm like i'm definitely not looking nothing like that in the eyeballs bro you've lost your mind shout out to that movie though all right but yeah bro yeah i'm not looking at that as boy he's crazy bro Can no you, i told you I, what I, are you doing i was in lockdown man from <laughs> Dick two said to i turned down everything <laughs> when you text that 515 that is funny bro i'm not messing that is with funny that. shout out to my dog <laughs> Yeah, especially if I'm driving over here and I got to face the sun, right? Yeah, the whole like, time. It's, it's yeah, tough to avoid. The whole time, bro. Tough to avoid. Yeah. Yeah, if it's in that within that window, yeah. I'm not a solar eclipse expert. I hate I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe, maybe solar eclipse experts out there are looking at me like I'm foolish right now. They say you can't wear regular sunglasses either. So, like, that doesn't help. Like, you have, and you, when you put them thick, like, it's crazy when you put them on, bro. Like, you, I could be sitting here to here and I can't see you with them on. But if I'm looking up at the sun, I can only see this sun, and I see the sun perfectly. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to look at the sun with my regular eye. That's what that does. I can't imagine what your regular eye might do, bro. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it wouldn't have been risky at that point. Yeah. Uh, because it is so late in the process, maybe it was only risky within that oh, bro. few minutes that oh, it actually no. crossed the moon, actually crossed past with the sun. But they said 2 to 4.30. Yeah. That's when the eclipse was happening. Yeah, bro. Stay up out the way. It's Shout only out to two my and a half hours. Shout out to of my, my dog. life. I, you know, I, I don't want to be. I don't have to be on the road at. Shout out to my dog. Four twenty-five. <laughs> Shout I, out to I can my wait dog. Wait another five minutes. <laughs> Shout out to my dog. <laughs> uh, Quan Summer from the three two three Watts, California. Yeah, it is one time for the culture. Watts. Lifted ones tuning in for the nine one six. Currently in the plan in tourney, but we'll bump the. So you're saying the play in tourney? Mm -hmm. well, we'll bump the Lakers. Not tripping on that. Ooh. He's the uh, Kings fan, right? It sounds good. Is he it's the Kings fan? Yeah, the Kings fan. Light the beam. It's all good. Light the beam. So Brian could dunk on the ones on. Huh? No, we ain't tripping. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you That's going to be the first-round match. That's coming up yeah, soon. I don't, know, I, mean, I don't know if you've been seeing the Lakers been cooking. Now, they, they took the L last night, but Bron didn't play. He got sick, bro. It was, like, the weirdest thing. He got sick right before the game started. Out, right? Yeah. Otherwise, we should have checked that one off, too. We've been cooking, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Don't play with Bron when it's time. It's about that time. Don't play with Bron right now. It is close. I mean, because Penguins right now. only have five games left uh -huh. in NHL, NBA. It's right on the same, same timeline. Mm -hmm. Don't play with that, man. So he's definitely, or the Lakers, they're definitely in the yeah, playing game, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. No matter what. And they ready to cook. Are the Warriors in? Ah, uh, yeah. They, no, I got to check. Wow. I think they're like right on the cusp, though. Like everybody's like right on the cusp at the end of it right now. But they should be in, though. Mavericks, are they in the Mavericks real thing or are they playing? No, Mavericks are in the real one. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the Mavericks just knocked out the Rockets last night, if I remember correctly. Wow, I didn't realize the Celtics were... This is the best record. Yeah, they got the best record in the league. Everyone in the East. So even mm -hmm. yeah, the whole league. Wow. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Timberwolves fifty four and twenty four, number yeah. one in the West. This is what we saying. What? So, so what I tell you, the Lakers, bro, <laughs> when they see that that trigger, bro, is the Nuggets the only team that's a bad matchup. They ain't worried about Minnesota. They What's the worried. deal with the Nuggets? They just been coasting this year. I mean, they're still I mean, the two seed. Still, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like they still nice, bro. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Mavericks are five seed. Mm-hmm. Kyrie Suns are in at six right now. right now, but Pelicans have the same record as them. Yeah. So it's Pelicans. So Suns, Pelicans, Kings, Lakers, and Warriors mm-hmm. look like some combination that of that combo. will be the play. Yeah. Yeah, Warriors will definitely get in because they're they're significantly mm-hmm. ahead of the Rockets. Rockets got eliminated last night when they lost. Okay, yeah, that that ended it for them. Who? Uh, the Mavericks beat them. Yeah, yeah. So it's just about the seeding that because mm-hmm. all those teams have very similar records yeah. right now. So for LA, well, actually, they, I mean, they could get a six seed and not be in the play. So if this is the day, it just depends on how it finishes. Yeah. Worst case, playing still cooks. They're still fun. Six seed, you not all the way trip it. It's just like I said. Preferably, we want to get the Nuggets in the conference finals. That's what we want to get them at. Don't rush it. Get it there. You don't want to maybe catch them off guard round one. No, see, you thinking of it the other way. We got to keep AD going. You got to get AD. Yeah. And he just said he got hit in the eye. Uh. (laughs) Do you know how that go? (laughs) He's up. You know how AD get, bro. (laughs) Yeah. So he's going to give some time. You know, just never know him. So he's banged up right now? It, it just happened. So you never So if he was fully healthy, though, maybe you do want to yeah, catch the different. Nuggets first round. No, no, catch him off no, guard. no, no, no. Let, let's get some momentum Is going. AD rusty? What's going on with him? It's just AD. Do you trust AD? I trust Joker a lot more than I trust AD. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's that. So you can act like you can trust AD? I don't trust AD like that, though, bro. I want AD to get a series under his boat and get it going. And then after that, then we can go see him. But... I'm not playing. I don't trust AD like that. Mm-mm. No. I told you. H- that ain't hurt. He already got it built in right now. I don't like that, bro. You already coming in with, ah, you already got something. Like, mm-mm. Nope. Give him time. It's AD, bro. Ricky West listening in with Deke's baby mama Bo- from the 412. <laughs> bro. <laughs> shout out. Shout out. Damn, Ricky's got no respect for me. Shout out. It's a cold world, bro. It's a cold world. Maybe he'll apologize, though. Maybe he'd be like, I'm sorry. I, I didn't think that was the right thing to say. I couldn't sleep. That's what Coach, I couldn't sleep. He says, been eating at my soul. I said, God, dog, bro, you had like you curse his mama or something, bro. <laughs> he just said his albums was kind of weak. That's it. Ryan Man. O'Connell from Virginia Beach, the 757, originally from 412, Coriopolis. Shout out. Shout out to Coriopolis and more importantly, shout out to the Sam uh, M. One time for the coach. One time. Say a few more. Leah Warren from the 254. Brandon Clark from the 540, Roanoke, shout Virginia. Shout out, shout out. And then last one is Jimmy Metters the second from the 909 from respect. Santa, California. Respect, respect. I likes it, man. And I see you, Brandon Griffin, in the Greenville, South Carolina, 864. And Squatchies, Squatchies, I think that's how you say it. Appreciate you recognizing the Pikachu shirt as well, man. So salute you for that. Let's tap in, get these Super Chats rolling. And uh, yeah, man, let's get this thing going, man. It's going to be a good one today. AJ Martinez gifted the most membership to President Nitty. Shout out AJ Martinez, the absolute rock star, as you always are. And President Nitty, welcome to the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Fish momentum in the house. Shout out the official momentum. One time for the culture. It says happy 60th, 66th birthday to my mother. Miss Let's Leslie go. Marie Bonabis Myers. Shout out, Mrs. Leslie Marie Bonabis Myers. Happy 66th birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. He also you says, go. hashtag Mr. Jack Mary Myers Jr. Ambition Live at Rivers Casino, Friday, April 19th. Let's go. 8 p.m. Let's free. go. Let's go. That's the day after my little man's birthday. I like it. I like it. AJ Martinez, happy B-Day to my loca mama. Okay. Mitch, 74 years old tomorrow. Yeah. Happy birthday to my mama. Shout to Michelle, even though she wants to drive an ice pick in my eye. All right. All right. Shout out to the fact that she has that was not. Pretty specific, too. Yeah. Shout out to the fact that she has not 
driven said ice pick through your eyes so shout out to michelle for self-control and discipline shout out to your mama as well and more importantly shout out to local mama aka mitch in the 74 years old tomorrow man salute 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 i like it age i like the energy Tito Good Vibes gets the match membership to Young Shad 101. Shout out to the homie Tito Good Vibes and Young Shad 101. Welcome to the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Tito always in the building. Man, salute you, baby. You know that. It's always love. Camonier, what up, guys? I saw CT ESPN reported that Justin Simmons could be signing to Pittsburgh soon. Also, the Steelers' pre-draft visits are exciting. A lot of receivers and cornerbacks. No, nah, shout out, shout out. I saw CT ESPN was was uh, upset about um, the number eighty four being given out in Pittsburgh as well, and I saw how that actually created a little bit of a of a ripple. He, he was he was you know he pulled up some some clips from so I was like, oh no, God, don't you try to use this one as a pawn in your agenda? But yeah, yeah. Hold on, what are you talking about? Well, I, I saw he, he pulled a clip from GP, what, the number one at one point, and he was like, I'm going to post oh, yeah. that as a part of my argument. And then he was like, yo, I'm going to retire a Raider. Talk about AB. He was like, yo, I'm going to retire a Raider, number 84, since y'all want to give out my 84. And then he's like, well, you know what, Seven, give his the bow, Terry Brash. If I could come back, I'm coming back to where he said he wants to come back and wear number 86. To where Hans number. They said they need to give out Terry Bradshaw number. And then he also came at Mr. Rooney. Called Mr. Rooney some unsavory names. I'm not about to repeat that. But his he was referencing a couple of things. At one point he was talking about how Terry Bradshaw is about to be, I think, 70 something. And he was like, Yo, you ain't retired his number yet. What you waiting on? And he was like, Yo, you ain't get Franco ain't get a chance to see it happen because he obviously passed away. And I was like, hey man, all right, like, okay, AB in the midst of your craziness. That is legit. I, I do I I get what you're saying there, but as always with ABS, the delivery is kind of chaotic. But if you could weave, I'm like, you, that's that's kind of legit, okay? Well, he just can't leave a good tweet as is either. That's the problem. Like, all right, he started off yeah. with like, I'm gonna retire Raider uh, hashtag eight four or whatever we got it was. It. it was like okay, that, that was kind of funny, right? Kind of like, funny, cool, we get it. but I mean. I assumed he was kind of serious too. No, which, like, like I'm pissed off that you're giving out eighty four. When we were talking 84. about it up here, I'm like. So, yeah. yeah, I got that from that tweet. All right, a little funny, a little tongue-in-cheek, but mm -hmm. you are seriously pissed about 84 being given to Cordell Patterson. Yeah. Fine, whatever. But then he had a tweet after that, which was like the Bradshaw stuff. Yeah. And like, yo, let, let's retire Bradshaw's number. What are we waiting yeah, for? And then was, he said the same thing about seven. Once seven like, has the Hall of Fame, retire his Terry, number. I'm like, oh, wait, this is actually good because – he said the still. It was like he was like it should be five name or five numbers strictly from the still curtain era. Yeah. And when you were thinking about it, it's like, dude, he brought up Lambert. It was, yep. he, so it was like Lambert, Webster, uh, Webster Blunt. It was everyone I, in it that seventy four yeah. draft. Yeah. I saw. Yeah, I saw that graphic. Yeah, but I was like, dang, bro, like you bringing might up some been, Might have been Swan or Starworth. It in was there. one of them. I wasn't sure. But which neither one. of those those jerseys have actually have been given out. Yeah. Since they retired. Yeah. So it was like he was making some legitimate points. And then he brings up the Heinz Ward ahead, thing yeah. of, yeah, I'll come back and play for the Steelers for free, like, okay, but I'm going to wear 86. It's like he started to go this way with it. He's like, okay. And then he threw himself in a Photoshop 7 jersey. And, yeah. <laughs> and he went completely off yeah. the rails. <laughs> but he said he called 7 first. He said he hit 7 up, and 7 said it was cool. He blessed him. Kind of like when Pouncey greenlighted Kendry. Not a funny joke. The Heinz Ward, I chuckled a little bit. <laughs> the Seven jersey, no, not funny. Even if Seven not Green funny. lighted it? Even if Seven did say it's okay? No, because we know that's a lie. But he did say that. He said that Seven said it. Now, I'm with you. I am not believing that part in the least bit, but that is what he said. Yeah, it's just like in Step Brothers, whenever they're uh, wearing the tuxedos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seth Rogen's like, oh, yeah, this is kind of a funny joke. Yeah. You're, you're making fun of the interview, yeah. wearing the tuxedos, taking a little too seriously. I get it. I, I get, get it. it. Like, we you know, we, we get each other yeah. here. And then uh, John C. Riley farts, and he's like, you know what? Those tuxedos yeah. are a little effed up right now. Yeah. That's that's so how AB's tweets went. Slow it's bunch, like, bro. Yeah, okay, slow you're bringing bunch. up good points here. Mm -hmm. Let's just leave it at that. It seems like you're you're... Not as mad about the 84 right. being given out. And it's the whole principle of yeah. the number. And I get that. It's like, yo, we can, we can, we can all support this, AP. We can support and then this. You just, and then you're just taking shots. And it's like, all right, you're playing games. And now, yep. now this is effed up. Yes, yes. You took it a little too far. You had me. I was about to hit a like button one time. And I was like, ah, nah, AB didn't hit AB now. Yep. But he did have some points, though, bro. He did have some points. <clears throat> but he, okay, so I guess why we went on that whole... A B discussion is because he brought yeah. up A B's company 
ABC's network, CTSPN, yeah. is reporting that Justin Simmons and the Steelers uh, mm-hmm. could be coming to an agreement here soon. Hey, man, <laughs> if he's right on it, I'm cool with it. Because what's thing. what's his track record? Like, I know he he got the two. He's he got, got the Diggs two, one. Right? And he's got the Russ Wilson. Yeah. But like, how many others have he thrown out there? And it's they, they're the just problem. going by the win, and yeah. no one's keeping track anymore. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know, but it's like some of the stuff. I'm like, okay. Cause I've been trying to tune, and I'm like, let me see, like, what he brought up a lot of Justin Jefferson yeah. ones, and none of those yeah. have come to fruition. But my thing is, it's like I want to just simply see. Cause if this does come true, then it's like, bro, you didn't hit on three of our off season moves this <laughs> off season. Like, clearly, you're plugged into something. That's all, and it's not like you just shooting from the top list of, oh, this is all the top players at this spot. So let me get these guys. It's like, nah, bro. Some of these people we ain't even. So. I'm like, oh, let's find out. But I do, I, what I was going to say is this, man, Um, as I was going down the rabbit hole, which is A, B, and C, T, E, S, P, N's network and all that other stuff, <laughs> I did want to say I do like the fact, though, regardless of how chaotic his tweets have been, it does at least look like he's trying to move forward with his media stuff. Because he does have, like, an interview with Tyreek Hill. They're supposed to be driving. Yeah. And he was, you know, doing some promotion behind that. I was like, okay, I like this now. He has merchandise for the web for for the brand, but the merchandise kind of crazy. I'm like, bro, what you doing, bro? You I didn't see the merch. Yet. Yeah, 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 bro. It's kind of out of control. It's definitely kind of out of control. It's a B though, okay? So you're like, all right, bro. I like this part, uh, or that part, but like he doing some stuff. I'm just like, yo, can we just if you could clean it up a little bit, bro? You could hop into the same lane that a lot of us are doing, bro. And you can make your own, and you'll be just fine, bro. You can do it, and it's a smooth life. It's great. But I just don't know if he go commit, bro. But it looked good. That's I wanted to salute him, though, bro. Uh, over under for the amount of podcasts that get produced ah. for CTSPN. Ah, four. Ah, are you taking the over? Or the I, under? I, 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 I wanted to say ten. Ah, <laughs> maybe that's wishful thinking. The Tyreek one had me just like, okay, you promoing it? Like maybe like we're gonna get multiples of this. So that's what I'm hoping. Because how much like, crazy shit are we gonna hear from that interview? Well, this is what I'm hoping because <laughs> when I think of how podcasts are going. I always say to myself, man, as a player, you're going to be way more comfortable and you're going to open up way more with another player. So because of that dynamic, I think you're going to get some good stuff. But then because it's A-B, you know it's extra crazy. So that's the other part where I'm like, I think we're going to get some gems, but I think it could, I don't know, not go all the way Joe rogan but you know how like sometimes it get, just get kind of a little, little, little wild. I think with him, we can get a little, we can get a little out there. I think, yeah, because it's A-B. And what's the state of mind as he's recording them, too? That's the other part. I guess it will be interesting from the aspect of, like you said, players are more open to other players in these type of settings. But, I mean, it's, especially when you add A.B., uh, who knows what type of stuff Tyreek Hill will say around A.B. And think about this, too. A lot of dudes, bro, that are in this league right now are fans of A.B. A lot of these dudes that are in the league right now watched A.B., whether when they were in college or when they were in high school. So if A.B. reaches out to some of these dudes, imagine if A.B. reaches out to George Pickens like, bro, I want to interview you on the show. Oh, G, I know for us, we're all like, oh, Please my God, that. right? Please oh, my God. That. But could you imagine for that player what that means for him where you're like, dang, bro, like you're taking another, you, you peeping what I'm doing because we know how we talk about you. We know what you were when George Pickens was in high school. A.B. was the best receiver in the league when George Pickens was in college. A.B. was still dominating folk at time. You know what I mean? Or still cooking at time. Or maybe not. I got to see because you might be running that, in that range. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it's certain things that GP is going to have memories of watching him. And that's what I'm saying. Like around the league, if we start, oh, Maron save Brown. You know what I mean? You start going around these different dudes. Like, yo, if A.B. hit him up, he's like, yeah, bro. Like, to an extent, man, they going to feel some type of energy with that. So that's why I'm like. I think it could work for him. But he really got to, like, clean it up a little bit more. Just... You know, or at least just stay consistent. That's, yeah, and, and but like when I say clean up, like continue to work. Yeah, when I say clean, I mean like his brand is the crazy just what he says, and that's the part where I'm like, I get what you're doing, but I'm like, if you could just clean it up just a little bit, I think you'd be you got a chance, bro. Get some type of consistent yeah. scheduling going. Because dudes would love to go up there, bro. I'm telling you, dudes would ride with him, bro. 
He's got to pay the video guys and the editors. That's, that's it. the problem, though. <laughs> that is definitely the problem. That's why it might be under four yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, it because might be under four. I could definitely see a scenario where he gets a check and they're like, yo, what's up? And he's like, that's all me. Y'all got the I'm chance put, to work with me. I'm putting you guys on right Yeah, now. you got the chance to work with me, bro. Put that on your resume. That's got to count for something. And you're like, hey, <laughs> we ain't negotiate that part. Yeah. So that's, yeah, you, you go call. Under four. He don't pay. Under four. Okay. <laughs> Might just be one. <laughs> Maybe the real line should be one and a half. <laughs> I think four is reasonable, though. Uh, give, give him the benefit of the doubt. We give him four. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. That was a comment by Kyle Monier, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out he to Kyle Monier, though. He also brought up these pre-draft videos. I have been seeing some of them, bro. I do like it, though, man. I, I'm a fan of it, man. Um, We know we need both. That is definitely the thing. And we've also said that there is a correlation. Um, whether it's pro day combine or top 30 pre-draft visit, that combination, that mix is typically the, uh, the batch of players that we're going to draft or draft from. So yeah, man, any of them names, man, be alert. Let me go him. over to yeah, yeah, Steelers Depot. Oh yeah. Shout out to Steelers Depot, bro. They, they always, always do it. a pretty good job. Of Major love for Steelers Depot, man. Major love for the Well, boys. we already talked about Penix. Mm-hmm. Running back Dylan Johnson from Washington. Mm-hmm. Date unknown. About five or six receivers here. Ricky Purcell from mm-hmm, Florida. Mm-hmm. Alakai Corley from Western K- Kentucky. Mm-hmm. That's Xavier Leggett. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple of these guys I've mentioned. Big body athlete. Xavier Leggett That's from the South big Carolina. Body athlete. Taj Washington, USC. Luke mm-hmm. McCaffrey, Rice. Come on now. I was watching Luke. I was watching Luke McCaffrey. AD Mitchell from Texas. Mm-hmm. And then with the offensive tackles, we got Travis Glover from Georgia State. Offensive nice. tackle, Talise Fuaga from Oregon State. Mm-hmm. Big body. Offensive tackle Troy Fautenu from Washington. All the guys, all the guys. Uh, Marius Mims from Georgia. You know I like Matt that Gong one. Matt Gong Calvis from mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Hey, a local hey, visit. Hey, wait, wait, why'd you say it like that, bro? Why you th- man? I don't know how good this guy is, to be honest. What you mean? He moves well. He, he's a, to me, man, I think he's a, you know, swing tackle type dude, bro. Good player, though. Yeah, he's he's a guy we might target later in the yeah. day. Yeah. But. You know, I thought you were going because he's from Pitt. I thought you were going to be like, you know, put no, some respect on it, bro. Oh, yeah. Always put respect on it. Because I butcher his name, and that's why I was glad that you pronounced it. I, I oh, my God. I don't think I pronounce the it name right every either. time, bro. I don't know what, yeah. how you actually pronounce it. Yeah. I've always seen his name. I don't think I've ever had to pronounce yeah. it yet. Because <laughs> I'm my like, first oh, time I was pronouncing like, it. I was like, I ain't cool. He's big body, but he moves well, bends well. Like, all right, good player. Nothing, I'm like, not great, but just good player. Listen, you know the type of prospects Pitt puts out on a year in, year out basis. Talk, talk your talk, D. Talk your talk, man. Like Jordan Addison. Talk your talk, bro. KPA. Talk your talk. Uh, Aaron Donald, Elijah Kansi, yeah, Aaron Donald. I mean, Aaron Donald, who also who also said that. I don't know if this guy's Watt. in the same tier as those guys. Is what I'm saying. Fair enough, fair enough. But shout out to AD because he uh, did. Shout out TJ. Just just in general though, Pitt yeah. guys going pro always a great thing. Hundred percent. Because we there's another name on this list. There there is. Yeah, we we'll like that one too. Mm-hmm. Uh, o lineman Stephen Jones out of Oregon. Yep. I don't know who that who that is at all. A uh, couple defensive tackles, mm-hmm. Braden Fisk, Florida State. Florida State, yeah, five, Christian five. Boyd from Northern Iowa. Mm-hmm. I was just watching the day too. Yeah, a couple, few defensive linemen. Uh, Darius Robinson, Missouri. Mason Smith, LSU. Yeah. Logan Lee from Mason Iowa. Mason with two A's. Got six corners here. Mm-hmm. MJ Devonshire. Yeah. Out of pit. H two P. Local visit. Mm-hmm. Andrew Phillips from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Nate Wiggins, Clemson. Max Melton, Rutgers. Sean I Stevens, fair State. Too. Yeah. Daquan Hardy from Penn State. Yeah. And then uh, Steelers Depot has something written here about Zach Frazier. Initially reported coming in for a pre Jeff visit. Known pro day dinner. But would be a local visit, not count against the team. Oh, West Virginia. A lot of 30, okay. but mm-hmm. the initial report was deleted. Hmm. Rep- and then three more reported slash known pro day dinners. Yeah. Uh, Terry and Arnold, Cooley McKinstry, and Dallas Turner, okay. all from Alabama. I like it. I like it. Terry and Arnold, McKinstry, obviously Man. corners, and then Dallas Turner, edge. Mm-hmm. We not getting Dallas Turner though, bro. No. Yeah, we we not getting that one. So maybe he just invited him out just to talk to him. No, no, no. None of the centers here mm-hmm. this far. Nah, but they've been to, but they've sent. They uh, went to pro days. Yeah, they sent Arthur Smith to Graham not, Barton's pro day. Right, not Tomlin or Conn yeah. either those pro days. Right, but Arthur Smith, the OC, the new OC, and his background is offensive line as well. So that could part, partly be why. But, yeah, they did send uh, 
Arthur Smith to see I think Graham we sent Barton the o, and Jackson. Did, did we send the O line coach? Yeah, uh, for... Myers went out to yeah, Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Pat Myers, too, mm-hmm. man. Good cat right there, man. So, yeah. Maybe it's just new ways of doing business under the con regime. Yeah. Because we need a center. We definitely like, do. We need a center. Mm-hmm. If we don't sign anyone, we need to draft one of those three guys. I would agree. I definitely would agree. But I do like the fact that the two people that I think matter the most in terms of evaluating the offensive linemen, at least those two guys were there to see them in person. I think everything else, you go back to the tape. But in terms of the pro days or combines, it's really you want to see how they move with your own eyes in real life. And then from there, I just want to talk to you. I need to, you know, what do you know? What, you know, how does your mind work? What do you think of with this? What are your communications that you're accustomed to versus what we might speak from, you know, our playbook and things like that? But Any like other notable names, names stick out to you? I mean, right now. Interesting names, at least. I mean, of course, it's some interesting names. The corners were interesting. Yeah. I mean, the uh, the Phillips. Uh, I like Phillips. Yeah, Adrian I think Phillips. I think a good third round pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like him a lot. I thought of him, and then obviously at the receiver spot, when we talked Leggett or even Mitchell because we know that's the speed. You call him AD. I was butchering it. Was it Ad- Adani? Adane? Adonai. Adonai? Is yeah. It is? Yeah, they have him it's listed like, as AD Mitchell. Yeah, that's I'd much rather call say. him AD Mitchell, yeah. But, you know, that's big – well, not big speed, but that's speed speed. Obviously, he set the record at the combine, but you watch him on tape, 1,400 receiving yards. Um, was it 115, 110 catches and stuff like that? Definitely would stretch the field on you, though. Um. Yeah, I like his game, bro. Definitely one of the ones I like. Yeah, him and yeah, the other Texas the receiver yeah. are interesting because they are big speed. Mm-hmm. They don't seem that polished though, right? No, nah, they're down the grass. That was the one thing like that popped up. It was like with Quentin Ewers, he going to extend that thing. He was just letting that thing fly, and them dudes just running by you. With uh, I remember with A.D. Mitchell, though, he would be lined up outside, or they was lining him up in the slot. And it was just a ton of just verticals, deep overs, just run away from your leverage, use that speed, and then got the big arm quarterback. That's definitely one of the ones I'm like, if you want to go to uh, you know, another team in the AFC, you 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 can go to another team in the AFC with a big arm quarterback. Just run as fast as you can, he'll get it out there to you. Hmm. I g yeah, I I guess so. Bills are in the receiver market, huh? <laughs> That's just what I like. I'm like, yo, how fast can you run? Just go. Because you, you're actually coming I'm down with I'm just trying it. to figure out a way yeah. for the Bills to not be able to get any of these receivers. That's but actually I, I, crazy. It's impossible. That because is there's actually crazy. Too many receivers out there. <laughs> yo, I'm like, yo, it's because look at I'm like, bro, look at what's happening, bro. Like, I ain't triple you either. What's happening? Right? I don't want him to go up the like, What's happening? Okay. Who, who's the new toy? I don't want him or who Brian Thomas. Who's the new toy? There. Brian Thomas is No, I don't dog. want either of them. That was what it was. They like, yo, does it does that happen? I seen one thing where the Bills was trying to get freaky in a mock, and they got into that top five. I saw oh, y'all reckless with uh, this. Come one. on, they, you know they was trying to get to. <laughs> I was like, oh, if we do that one, Lord, <laughs> oh, don't don't let that one get up there. Oh, how much did they have to give up? They gave up. What they don't say, what did it cost? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was gonna be a Thanos move, but if that one got there, where'd you find this? Just, just, just what hey, blood man, made this one? Just, up? Hey, look, just though, bro. If that, I saw something today, yeah, because uh, I was just looking mm-hmm. up potential trades and what it could cost for us to trade up, trade yeah. down. Because I was talking about that on Bleach Report. Mm-hmm. I saw something today. Headline read: Steelers in this iteration of uh, yeah. the mock draft. Steelers trade Russell Wilson to the Raiders. <laughs> Give me a break, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Give me a break. We're not picking him up to trade him, bro. That was not just, like that. We, yeah. we got a second round pick for him. Yeah. I, I mean, I clicked on it. I want to see yeah. what the compensation was. Second round pick. But come on. That's stupid. They get stuff. reckless, bro. They get reckless. But I'm like, yeah, if it ever works out, bro, just know if that one gets there, I'm hype. All right. Thank you to Kyle Monier for that comment. Next, we got. Sean McCartney, when anything cool happens in the sky, it's cloudy, so I didn't bother to look. Hopefully, I'm out of PA in another life. <laughs> no, I can dig that, bro. I can dig that. But you just got to stick with it, though. You know, the clouds will come through, then they pass by, then they come, then they pass. You know. AJ Martinez gives their most membership to Daniel Barry Sports Highlights. Shout out to AJ Martinez, continuing to be great at everything. And to that individual who I definitely don't remember all of that name. Welcome Something to Sports Highlights. Yes, Sports Highlights. The Upper Room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And what up, Steeler Girl 808? She says, Hi, Stan. Hi, Tidy. What about how to dig in everybody that's in the chat, man? What's happening, bro? Don't be like that. Come on, man. We ain't here, too. 
Shout it's out. Poppin'. Shout out, bro. Shout out. And what up to you, JW, Tom J, X Concepts, always pulling up one time for the culture. And I'm with you, Michael Martin. Michael Martin says you should trade him for a third. Russ. We're uh, not trading Russ. We ain't trading him, though, bro. Can't do it. Can't we're do not it. trading Russ. Can't do it. Nope. I want to see how that plays out. Yeah. For a million bucks? Yeah. Come on. I'm with you. Metal Militia, 99. Shout out. I missed the Madden gameplay, Deke. Mm. So do I. Mm. Mm. <laughs> wow. Mm, mm, mm. I guess how much do I really miss it, though? Because mm, mm, mm. it doesn't take much to hop back on, right? <laughs> Talk is cheap. What are your actions saying? My actions mm -hmm. are saying I don't miss it that much. Uh, if you really loved it, you'd be on it. That's what they say. I do miss it, That's what they say. That's what they say. I do. Yeah. I'd like to hop back on. Yeah, man. Gotta get back in the groove, bro. The question is one. So here's my problem. Here's All one right. of my problems. Listen to Is if I do hop back on, I would like to play with this new team we got. Mm-hmm. But you can't play head to head like that right now because now they don't wait. have yeah. the rosters updated. Mm -hmm. So really my only way of getting this done is either ultimate team. But I don't feel like spending money and doing all that shit right now. Yeah. Or franchise. I'm down. I'm ready to watch you, bro. The people want to watch you, bro. Metal Militia 99 is not the first person to say this. And I'm sure they're not going to be the last person to say this, Deke. So, yeah. Cody James says, Deke secretly playing still. LOL. No, I I have played maybe once or twice just in my downtime over, over this like six, seven month hiatus. And the one time I did play, it was the week leading into the wild card game. Yeah. I was just like, you know what, I want to step on the sticks. I put Mason in at quarterback. Oh. I went on a run. I mean the stats are there. I think I uh -huh. went five and oh. Okay, okay. Online, head to head, no joke. There were some throws that I saved on the system too. There were Ooh, some plays that okay I saved the video highlights, but okay. I didn't want to post them at the time to jinx anything. Respect. There was like there was like I think one or two game winning drives I had with Mason yeah. too. But you didn't want to mess it up. I, I didn't want that. to. I didn't we, want we to get too high too. on it. We appreciate you on that. Yeah. So I, those are still there. They're still out there if you guys want to see my skills on display and what, what I'm capable of. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see if it, it happens. Definitely for college football. I'm yeah. not missing out on that. Yeah, it is, dead. We got this time in between, and I could hop on Madden. And I want to play with Fields, man. I want to, I want to play with Fields. I want to, want to see what we could do with Quez Watkins, yeah. Calvin Austin, Patrick Queen on defense, Cordell cook, Patterson. They should cook. I want to test that team out. And the only way to do that, really, is franchise. I don't know what the reaction would, reactions would be to it. I think the people still gonna be vibing if you drop Are any people video. Snake bitten from? No, nah, I think if you drop any our most recent Steelers, attempt at a franchise. If you drop any Steelers gaming content, the people gonna rock with it. I want to get man? thirty-two users in the franchise, though. I right. hate playing the computer, so it's gonna take some commitment. It's gonna take some just legwork to get this thing going. Am I built for that? Are the people built for it? Like, do that's they want the that right life. now? Yeah. Like, that's the question. That's real. That is real. Because, like I said, it is a commitment. Definitely, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I guess technically I could get the roster downloaded uh, and just play offline, play like an offline franchise, or just play in the play now mode offline. I hate that. I hate playing the computer. It's stupid. There's no point. So we'll see. Yeah, man. Bump the computer. We ain't playing the computer no more. Huh. There's that. All right. Oh, also, <clears throat> from those shout-outs, just, we just did a second ago, Steelers Girl 808 this. She did say, hi, Deke, and she did say, hey, Mo. So back to uh, you. Thanks. And then we also What's had, uh, let, let's see, let's see, uh, there's a couple other ones. Man, stand clear, show some love, the analyzer, said what's happening, you know what I'm saying? So there's more people in the building, so salute them. 
All right, just make sure they won't sleep. You know, you know how they go sometimes, dude. Make sure you know what I'm saying. Sean McCartney, roughly two more weeks, and center is still the biggest need. Yeah, I'd love a right tackle, cornerback, or receiver, but as of this moment, we have no one to play center. Yeah, that is very accurate. Um, we're gonna get to a couple of mocks today, man. One from ESPN, another uh from you know some of the fans and stuff from the show that y'all have sent in and stuff like that. But yeah, man, got to talk some of the center stuff, bro, because. We are still a little light at that position. And, yeah, we are getting closer and closer to that draft. Yep, need a center right now. Yeah. Lee Govin says, Deke is straight. Did he? Hold on. I don't know. <laughs> is he just trying to say, is Deke is straight? Did he on Madden? Did he you on Madden? I don't know. He's trying to I, He's trying to make an uncalled for comment right now. <laughs> it's very uncalled It's very uncalled for. But just, I, ah. I don't know what I don't know what you're gonna be doing or getting done to, but yeah, anything referring to that right now, you know, it's black as hot. Yeah, why, I don't know why. But, yeah, because there was no reason to. Yeah, I, I don't know where they're going with that. Bring way. that into the con. You could have just said Dookie, right? Yeah. If, if you're yeah. trying to say I'm bad at Madden, you don't you don't gotta say Diddy. Or if you want to say you about to get on somebody, you be like, yo, he finna trash, and you can say that too, but you ain't got the the. the that's aggressive. That's that's a bit heavy handed, man. You know, you you forgot the with all due respect yeah. part, bro. Yeah. Yeah, don't be tarnishing yeah yeah bro that that's the reputation ah. don't be tarnishing the brand like yeah that. bro come on man you, you you seen what my man say no diddy hey man just leave leave him alone bro we ain't man leave my man's low bro don't put that on him no yes man. Uh, i, I would have preferred yeah. dookie if you said yeah, dookie or yeah. like you said we'll trash you on mad man just keep that over there please <laughs> hmm. uh Dresden, i trade picking straight up and a first next year to land a dunze and keep our pick at 20 I mean, I can understand <clears throat> your logic, but I guess you would just be saying to yourself that you know Rome uh, Adunze is going to be, or not just going to be, is already better than a year going into year three George Pickens. I mean, if that's what you're saying, great. And if that's what you believe, man, great. There's you know, nobody to say that you're wrong for that. Me personally, I don't think that's the case. I think George Pickens is still a better receiver at this stage than Adunze will be coming in um in 2024 and i think that gp ceiling is just as high as a dunes or uh, as a dunes um in terms of you know being an elite receiver being a franchise one you know being a franchise cowboy receiver i think that they're both capable of that but we already got gp here and i already have seen you know certain things gp has done so that's why for me i personally wouldn't do the move of trading gp you know, for ultimately a swap of GP for Roma Dunze. Because, like you said, we're going to keep the 20th pick regardless, right, in this scenario. But that was my thing. Yeah, hell no. I'm not yeah. trading this at all. Yeah. Uh, this is terrible. This is, this is, where do you come up with this? Well, because the, in the analogy, is like this. If he's saying the Dunze right now, but if it was Marvin Harrison Jr., would you still have that same answer? And I think that's what no. he's saying. For him, I he still, looks at no, Adunze I, I, as a better yes, receiver than would. GP. I actually, yes, I would have the same energy. Yeah. I, I don't want to give up picking in a first. Well, you're not giving up the first because you're getting the pick right back. That's what he's saying in this scenario. But that's why you got to do pickings in the first to ultimately keep it where you're... Oh, first next year. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I completely misread this. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I was like, you still got your pick, but it's just he's basically saying that that receiver is going to be better than he likes... A doomsday better than GP in 2024 and going forward. For me, I'm like, I would rather just rock with GP because I think GP is just as talented. And I already have him two years into this NFL, you know, yeah. growing. He's in the system. Like, whereas with Dunes, I'm going to have to restart that and build back up. That's what he's asking. So that's why I said to you, like, if it was Marvin Harrison uh, Jr., would that change how you feel? Because some people view Mar yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. as, Yo, he's already about right. to come in and be a top five or a top ten. Take him over GP right now. Like some people would say that. Or if it was Jordan Addison at times last year where you were like, you would take Jordan Addison over DJ. If this was Jordan Addison, would you take him over GP in this type of scenario? I think GP is going to be that dude. He I should be at least. Yeah. So like we already got our guy. Like I don't, I don't need to go seeking elsewhere for that. Yeah. You I do think Marvin Harrison is going to be legit, but then, yeah, I'm giving up an extra first to get him. It's, eh, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I don't need to go through all that. But, yeah, I guess it's not as egregious as I initially thought. I thought Because you thought it was the first round pick in picking. GP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. This year's first round pick. Yeah, that'll be a lot. 
Uh, Thomas Dowdy, is JPJ falling a concern or a plus for us? Um, I think it's a plus for us, but don't think of him falling in the sense of him doing anything wrong. The only reason why he's getting pushed down is because quarterbacks and wide receivers are getting pushed up. When you hear J.J. McCarthy, when you hear Michael Penix, when you hear, you know, that uh, those, those type of names potentially at times being mocked all going in the top ten, that's why a JPJ – uh, Marius Mims, even a J.C. Latham, those type of guys would get pushed back, even though to me, and I'm sure if you talk to some people league wide, they would all agree that at their position, they are better players at their position. But when we talk about just that same mindset of what you're drafting in the first round, what costs more to replace in free agency, what do you have to hit on? Quarterback is way more important than the center quarterback is going to be more important than your tackle than your corner than your receiver so that's the part for you know when a guy like jpj he gets bumped back a little bit and then from there you're still going to run into you know the conversation of do you want jpj do you like zach frazier or do you like graham barton in terms of your top three to me i still like jpj but i get why people like graham barton but at the same time, it's like I like certain things about Graham Barton, but there's a reason why for me that I like JPJ. And like I said, for everybody, they're going to have their own preference with that. But that's the big reason why you might see them dudes falling back in the draft compared to where they were initially mocked to. Because now you're getting this late push of quarterback receiver. You know, we know how we do. People go crazy. Boom, man. 318. It says, Dick, if you start a league, you can't forget about me. Mm. LOL. This is, this is facts. Oh, yeah, you're this definitely in. If you want to be Browns this again, you can be the Browns. Yeah. Justin Gordon. What's up, fellas? I tapped late today. I'm down here in Mooresville, North Carolina. Shout out. Getting ready for Zach Bryan's stadium tour. Y'all Ooh. bump country music. Okay. I, I was bumping that new Beyonce. Beyonce dropped a new country music album. Shout out to her. And then uh, I did see Morgan Morgan Whalen. He, 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 he got locked up. Yeah, he they pulled say, an AB. Yeah, they say he, he, he had a little, little, little too too much on his tongue. You know? Yeah. What did they say? Let, he let, let the liquor do the talking? Is that how he said? Yeah, that's the song. Yeah, he let the last liquor do light, the talking. Come last on, night, bro. We let the liquor talk. Come, yeah. come, come, come on, bro. Can, can that's I a great song. Come on, bro. I'm a He's culture, got one with bro. Post Malone coming out too. Come on, I'm a little coach. He got, he got, he got a couple hits with Dirk too. That's the other part. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I do a little, uh, I do a little Morgan, bro. Yeah. Which one's that one? That one's with yeah. the uh, Broadway Girls. Right? Yeah. And then he's on Dirk's rap album too. Okay. So I was like, you know what? Like, hey, man, I do a little Morgan. Yeah. And Morgan is in the uh, the Drake video too. The one that had just dropped with the girlfriends. The, I'd the say X -Droid. probably yeah. him and Luke Combs are the most uh, popping country I artists right now. I would agree. Yeah, and Beyonce, because Beyonce, you know, she dropped that country album now. She and her cowgirl era, man. Shout out to Beyonce, man. Beyonce, not not look one. But yeah, he was uh, what tossing chairs out the yeah window. yeah tossing off the balcony. Yeah, it's frowned upon. Floor. Said it's frowned upon, bro. It's definitely frowned upon. Don't don't recommend doing that, Deke. Probably felt good in the moment, but definitely don't recommend doing that, bro. It's just, yeah. yeah. So you know we were talking about misdemeanors and felonies and stuff <laughs> last week. So yeah. he, he's getting charged. Up Three felonies for this. I, yeah, because imagine if that chair hit somebody six feet or six floors down. That's a body or a paralyzed yeah. or a real critical something. Yeah, kid, grown, old person, woman, anything. That's why I was like, eh, I mean, it ain't crazy. But in theory, you're like, all right, yeah, it could have been bad. So that's why you get the charge. But hopefully his lawyer will fight it and get it down a little bit less. But that's why. Because it's like, we both are the same age. Like, is it in the world? Nobody got hurt. So it's not crazy but bro you throwing it off the sixth floor what type of chair was you throwing was it a lawn chair or was it a day ago yeah like what we talk about here bro six floor that day i think he almost hit the cop That's too. damn like bro <laughs> you're kind of tripping bro you see the cop and you throw the chair or like, like you just yo. didn't see the cop at all and it, this is just the most right. unfortunate event that what could is, like, which you cannot do that's your six floors up bro what are you throwing from six floors up anyway? You drop an iPad from six floors, or you might kill somebody, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like a chair is way more space, man. It's frowned upon. Yeah, I was it's frowned upon. Uh, but it was a metal chair. There we go. Okay, we got and Isaiah Clark. We talking football, but we talk about other stuff too. All right, stall us out. Don't don't bully us like that, Isaiah. You being mean today. Be nice to us. Square Harris says, my guys, I'm still salty about the JD trade. I have no faith in Dante Jackson. Matter of fact, Quez mm. Watkins can 
right now. Okay. Love the show, guys. Last thing, Cassius Marsh still want the fade. Deke, don't run. Ooh. That boy brought up Cassius Marsh on you one time for the coach. Is he if linked you with know, Cassius? You does, know. Does I don't know? know. But one time. One time. Um, Well, what I will say is this. I still feel salty about the JD trade. Who am I missing? Who's JD? Or is he talking Deontay? He's got to be Deontay, right? Or am I tripping? Am I forgetting? Who's the JD? Yeah, he's, he's, he's DJ, right? He's got to be saying gotta DJ. Got to be. Yeah. So, um, what I would say is this, man. Uh, you should have faith in Dante Jackson. Dante Jackson is going to be a fine cornerback, too. Worst case, he's going to fall to cornerback three. You're going to feel good about that as the season progresses in comparison to what we were dealing with last year at times with our cornerback, too. I'm just telling you that from what I've seen. Um, like I said, I put one of the uh, film sessions out there on him, man, so you can kind of look at some of the stuff that I specifically was pointing out directly from what he did last season and last season to me was the first time in his career where he didn't produce a turnover in terms of interceptions typically he's a multiple interception guy that was his first season back from an achilles injury but in that vein he played the whole season started played fine so that's the part for me where i'm like i still feel like we're going to be good with him so you know don't lose too much sleep on that now will we still add yes because if you can have Dante Jackson as your third corner, man, that's kind of like when we would have that scenario where, well, actually, we haven't had that in a minute. But I was thinking that year where it was uh, Joe Hayden, Steven Nelson, Cam Sutton. And we were like, bro, we feel like really, really good about that part. That's what we could potentially have if we still draft something that is higher end. So, but worst case, you still got a good cornerback, too. So that's kind of like I said, how I looked at it like that, man. Um trying to think what what else and then was it quest Watkins? uh yeah i mean quest we kind of all just wait and see yeah yeah <laughs> sweet yeah. uh, and shout out to you isaiah clark it was all love you say yeah man, it's all good hey, man. i'm just glad you here with us today baby for the heart let's get it <laughs> aj martinez says deke diggler the plumber hiding from baby moms whoa the plumber now I don't even want to know, D. I don't even want to know, bro. I don't even want to know. <laughs> nope. I don't even want to know. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> nope. Nope. Do we got to go? Uh, I, I, do I'm we scared. got to look up this one? <laughs> nope. I don't want I what, don't what even do like do? where we're going with this one. Nope. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's, this that, one's over my head. That, 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 but my pay grade. If he's trying to make a joke, I don't, I don't uh, know what yeah. he's getting at. I don't know. It made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> I was like, please don't do it. No, please. I'm right. Just not, not, not. At this part not, not, not yet <laughs> uh free oj man jf1 is gonna bring sog to the offense he might he meant to say swag yeah definitely say swag, swag or yeah. i was gonna say dog He's definitely bring that dog swag. to the offense. dog and swag both of them yeah so jf1 is the name that's what they call him i ain't know that okay he gonna rock number two but his nickname is jf1 all right like tb12 or yeah, KP8. So he goes by JS, JF1. Okay. Respect. Justin Gordon, what is the best case scenario for us in this draft if both of you guys, in both of you guys' opinions, two top linemen, are a top DB and receiver, or different combo positions? Um, I would say if I can get top lineman, top receiver, I'll be happy. Like, I'll be good with that. Yeah. I think uh, the way I was playing it out today, if we're just going to do best case scenario, mm -hmm. everything goes perfect for us. Maybe we get your guy Latham yeah. at 20. Because it's a chance if these quarterbacks and receivers are going. One of these three fall. centers fall to us in the second. Mm -hmm. And then we get like a Malachi Corley in the third. Respect. I that. think that would probably be my best case scenario. Yeah. That'd be amazing. I like that. Or, like you said, just give me the center, O line, whoever, first round. I, I'm yeah. leaning definitely center. Center right, right now. now. Yeah. Just give me center and then give me a give me dope receiver in the second. Yeah. Then go slot corner and the third mate and then maybe you get a depth tackle or something in the third too. Mm hmm Have them compete with more you know, just get Doesn't get some guy place. in the system. Yes. You don't have the highest yes. of expectations, but, but either do that or yep. yeah, get a guy on the D line in the third too. Yeah corner another corner i don't know you could do you could do a lot of things 
Uh, let's see here. Then Justin Gordon followed up with another. It looks like. Yeah. Shout out yeah, to Justin Mokes, Gordon. A month or so ago, a report came rating franchises. Mm-hmm. Dealers didn't grade well. Locker room trash and more. Do players care about that stuff? Will the Rooney's ever upgrade the facilities? So, um, yes, the players do care about it. Will the Rooney's ever update the facilities? Um, I don't know. I, well, no, I'll say this. He did do certain renovations, and that's one part of it. But the issue that the Steelers run into is the same issue that the Pitt Panthers run into. Because they share a facility, it's, it's kind of – you don't have any more room for expansion for either side because you can't go wider. There are pit sides pretty much right to the train tracks. The Steelers side is all ready to the street. They got a small parking lot before the next bubble indoor. And then you got the four football fields. So it's like, unless you kicking out one of them teams, man, you don't have a lot of room for expansion. So could you remodel it? Could you renovate? Sure. But in terms of what, you know, guys are complaining about, I don't think you're going to be able to get that, you know, without them, like, you know, expanding. Need more width (laughs) or or, or build up. One or the other, like, you – just kind of stuck on space right now, man. But the other stuff is like the game day stuff, you know, child care, that type of stuff, or places for your family to sit where they're not just like out in the, yeah, 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 he, he could do better with that. But that's with all due respect to. But it's also his money, so I ain't about to tell him how to spend his money. AJ Martinez says, I'm keeping Deke's life, PG-13, LOL. <laughs> D is wild. Hmm. <laughs> So is he saying we took his comment out of know, context? Bro. I don't know, bro. He, he was pure in his comment? I felt pure until he gave me the LOL. Then the last day, I was just like, yo, are, is that an AB or are you being real? Like, what does that mean? Because you, you need to elaborate more. I don't know, right. what, you, I don't know what you're getting at. Or is he being sarcastic? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah you want me to, can we keep going? With it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to decide for some it is of Asian. his comments. It's yeah, Asian, right. Yeah. He knows that, too. <laughs> that's, that's a part of his thing. You know what I mean? So I'm like... I don't know. I don't, I'm just scared of it. Yeah. <laughs> Rex Seven, watch some Chris Abrams drain tape. I like him as the Steelers' fourth pick if he's still on the board. Okay. He's been moving up the mocks, but he's nasty. Oh, no, I would agree. I definitely would agree. No, uh, because he's that's Missouri, right? If I remember correctly. No, let me check real quick. Sounds about right. I find say he's Missouri. Yeah, I I think you're right. Yep, Mizzou. Oh, let's go. Let's go, man. All right. But no, shout out to Chris, man. He said like in the fourth. Okay. See, that's – I still am like struggling right now. That's the part of the draft I'm still trying to get better at, the middle rounds. Because I'm like, ah, how did they how did they fall dead when some of these dudes be, you know, way higher? And they just like, ah. But that's what makes the draft the draft. All it takes is one person get picked out and all that thing get chaotic. And there's no perfect science. Yeah, they got that other corner. Out of Missouri, too. Mm-hmm. Rake Straw. Yeah. They're saying he's going to go, like, second. He's supposed to be real good. Yeah. Yeah, no wonder they were decent this year. Mm-hmm. I think they were they were pretty much like a top 15 team. Yeah. Most of the way. Free OJ, this draft is deep at positions of need for us. I wouldn't mind double dipping in the first. Maybe grab a tackle, trade back in for JPJ. Man, if we get two offense linemen in the first round or two offense linemen in the first 50 picks – I think we're going to be feeling great about it, whether it's tackle center or I guess it would have to be tackle center. So, yeah, <laughs> but I think with whoever the combo of those tackles and center, whether it's JPJ, Zach Frazier, Grant Barry, and whether it's JC Latham, uh, Marius Mims, Fuag, I think any of those type of dudes, you know, we're going to feel good about. We're going to be enjoying it and we're going to be over here like, Omar, he's done it again. Omar's done it again. So salute him on that, man. And it looks like we are caught up on supers as well. So I do like that. So is that it? Yes. Yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. Let's tap into this first topic, man, because it is 6 30. And we're going, you know what I'm saying? We did start a little later. So we're going to be respectful today. All right. We're going to be a little respectful. Yeah. Time. But on the front end, man, we did add a uh, tight end to the roster, man. Um, Michael Pruitt. This is, uh, let's see, his ninth year, if I remember correctly. Um, Obviously, he spent the past two seasons down in uh, Atlanta with Arthur Smith. Before that, he spent his first seven seasons with the Titans. Um, <clears throat> with Michael Pruitt, man, big body tight end. Um, 
realistically, man, that's your blocking tight end, though, man. Inline guy, can he give you some of the underneath drag routes, combat, catch stuff in the red zone on occasion? Yes, but that's not where he makes his hay. For him, he is a blocking tight end, man. You watch him in the run game, he's going to move people. You watch him um, at times when you want to match protect, he's going to make sure that your quarterback stays clean. He is that type of guy, but he's not per se the guy that you're – you're not using him per se as like lead blocking inside. You know what I mean? Like the whole Derek Watt fullback type. He is a true tight end. He is not a fullback to just clarify that. But in terms of, you know, what he brings is going to be the blocking element. I think right now he's direct competition for Darnell Washington. I don't view him as a Pat Fry move type guy, but in terms of Darnell's role, in terms of the big body blocking inline tight end, you get the, the drag route. You get the occasional fade or you get the vertical down there. That's what Michael Pruitt does. And I think he does a really good job at it. And I think that's the part when we're looking at Darnell Washington and we're seeing what we projected and kind of expected versus what we actually got. I think that this is that next, hey, it's time for your competition. We done brought Calvin Austin competition. What up, Quez Watkins? We done brought Russ competition, which was supposed to be for Kenny, right? But now Justin Fields, you're in here. Okay, cool. So to me, this is just another part of that, and I like it because either it's going to make Darnell Washington step up and be the player that we think he's capable of, or you're getting a vet who knows what he is doing. You're getting a vet that it's not going to get to this level ever, but he's never going to get to this level either. He's just going to be that steady Eddie, inline blocking tight end, drag rolls, beats to the flat, throw the jump ball. He's going to be swagged out because he look good. That's one thing I do say. He, he, he got that Ebron swag in terms of the tight end. He don't look stank out there. So, but that's He can catch better. But he don't get as much targets, nor is he getting to, like Ebron will route you. He ain't routing. He ain't doing that. But he does catch the majority of the ones that, you know, get to him. Even though Desmond Ritter, oh, man. It was Desmond one time. I forgot. It was, uh, what was the other one they had on there? Bruh. I'm like, yo, my man, just give him the layup, bro. They they making it work, bro. He's supposed to have a tutty in there every day. I'm like, bro, just if you could just get it to him. Yeah. Bad. Yeah, I, I guess there's nothing wrong with this signing. You know? It, yeah. Like, hey, another guy to the tight end room. I wonder. Yeah, that's the question. How much is this dude potentially going to play? And I think that's mm -hmm. just dependent on how well Darnell Washington, or maybe even how well Connor Hayward meshes with the Arthur Smith system. Yeah. Because this guy, mm -hmm. even though he doesn't really have any production, he's, he's not a receiver. He's yeah. played a fair amount. Like he, he'll get out there for like 40 percent of the snaps. Deke, you remember Matt Spafe, right? Yeah, he's their version of Matt Spafe when he was in Atlanta when he was in Tennessee. That's what we bringing him here to see if he can be that version. You're not Heath Miller. You're not Jesse James. You're not Pat Frymuth. You're the other guy. You do got to does all that dirty work. You're the Matt Spafe. You're the David Johnson type. You know? Like, go block that DN. That 4-3 DN is finna come into town. That's your guy. You're handling that one. When it's that 3 false side linebacker, hey, go put them hands on that man, all right? Keep my quarterback clean. Yeah. Like, I don't really want to see this guy. Man, we shouldn't that if often. Darnell does what he's doing. Because, yeah, Darnell offers the upside in right. the passing game. He has that versatility. He can keep a defense off balance a little bit more mm -hmm. than Pruitt. Because if Pruitt's out there, you're not looking at him as a receiving threat mm -hmm. at all, unless you're in the red zone. Correct. Red zone. But Darnell, yeah. one of the reasons we drafted him, why he was an attractive prospect, not only is he great at blocking, but... He's really big. He's a huge target. Yeah, he can maybe get you four or five hundred yards a, a year yeah. as your tight end too. He has the height. Um, Pru is probably six two, six three ish. Darnell, we know that's six five, six six. Like, it's taller. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's <clears throat> nothing wrong with this move. Uh, it's not exciting, and I will be bummed if we do see him because it it mm -hmm. would mean something didn't click with Darnell and yeah. Connor Hayward. Yeah. And we're stuck at like a certain ceiling with this guy that mm -hmm. is just not where like a darno could be yeah it'd be unfortunate but i mean he's nice insurance mm -hmm. obviously he's familiar with the arthur smith system and 
Arthur Smith obviously likes him. Like he was there for that whole Tennessee mm. run for like yeah, five years, and then he time. met up with over. Arthur Smith the last two years with Atlanta. Think about it. Arthur Smith was the head man. He brought him over. Yeah. So he's like, cool, that's his guy. They have a connection. Arthur Smith was the O-line coach, but he also was a tight ends coach in Tennessee before he took over the OC spot. So he knows Michael Pruitt in and out. So I'm like, when I saw this be the guy he signed, I'm like, clearly you're saying to yourself, who are guys that can implement my offense here? Who are guys that can run this offense and teach it to these guys? Cordell yeah, Patterson? 100%. Hunter, he can do that. Yep. Michael Pruitt, he could do that. Just like, all right, if you bring it, who else you going to bring it here from? It's Van Jefferson Arthur. is the other guy. Yeah. He was there last year. So it's been three. I, it's it, three. It feels like we've signed more Arthur Smith guys. Though, it does hasn't it? feel that way. Maybe because we've been linked to like Johnny Smith yeah. and a couple others. But you're right. I forgot Van was down there last year for the It feels train. like we've signed like five guys. So think from about the that. Smith you got a wide receiver, a running back, and a tight end all from the Arthur Smith system, bro. That's the play. That's for fact to play. Yeah. I like it. Cause that's the same. Anytime your coach league, remember I told you when Petten went to Cleveland, it was like, yo, we're about to go to Cleveland. That's that thought process, man. You gonna follow your guy, or if your guy wants you, for us it was just Coach T call. Like I trust him, still is way more than that. But yeah, I like this though because those guys are gonna have a certain level of comfort in this, a certain level of of uh, ability to just like I said, teach that to the other players. But they're also gonna have a certain like part of them where they feel like, bro, I want to make sure that I uphold, you know what I'm saying? Arthur wanting me to be here a part of this thing because we're going to look at those dudes and say, man, y'all, this isn't new to you guys. Like you guys are supposed to be over here like mm, 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 seamless in this thing. So we don't want to see y'all over here looking slow, playing crazy or anything like that. Y'all should be the guys that look good to an extent early on in this thing, man. One or OTS. Um, coming up. <clears throat> so they start prac- uh, they'll start workouts – um, I want to say this the fifteenth. It's like the because always the week of little man's birthday is when they actually like report April fifteenth. Yeah, it's like that time frame. Like really, yeah. But it's not practice. It's just them working out. That'd be for like the next three weeks. Then they'll actually start like their practices and may they just release the dates. So too. we're not gonna see any like football players. <clears throat> Correct. Well, yeah, you won't see no football play stuff until May. But they uh from I think it's like that first or second week in May. To that second week in June is when you'll get all the practice and stuff like that. But they did send those dates out every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Will they have media availability? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so you'll see media availability down there. You'll see, like, in May, you'll start to see all that type of stuff. But Not you'll see, April. like, Steelers controlling okay. the, this stuff for this. So you'll see Steelers dropping pictures. You'll see Steelers dropping interviews. But it's not a lot of, like, yeah, it's not a lot of, like, interviews that go on like that just because it's not mandatory. So since it's not mandatory, if I don't want to talk to the media, like they ain't gonna have media in there like that. Whereas if the team wants to talk to you to just kind of get something out for the new guys or certain storylines, then that type of stuff. But it's all like the team's gonna control that right now. But when May hits, that's when you'll get like all the other just random reports, random people, you know, recording stuff and having takes on stuff like that. Yeah, am I crazy for kind of being excited for OTA? <clears throat> Man, I'm excited. Usually I don't be wanting to go. I'm like, I want to go this year. Yeah, man, it's like, it's OTAs. I could mm-hmm. care less, but, I mean, with the potential new <clears> offense, <throat> the new cast of characters, yeah, just want to see some stuff. I don't, I don't know what exactly we're going to be seeing. Cause see it's It's going to be limited. Hey, look, see some. But okay, wait, I want to see something. It's going to be limited, being that it's OTAs. Yeah. Yeah, All if we right. if we get some hints, we get some, <clears> like, <throat> just little inklings of, yeah. How things could be looking with this offense. Yeah. I'll take it. I'm with you, bro. All right. Is that it with this guy? Yeah. So shout out to, like I said, Pruitt. shout out to Michael Pruitt, though, man. Like I said, good signing. Vet. Competition for uh, Darnell. Yeah, he's last in the league for a while. Yeah. So you said, man, if y'all digging, you know, the Michael Pruitt pickup, or if y'all digging, don't know Washington getting ready to step up, man, hit that like button one time for the culture, and don't forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. All right, a few additional Super Chats have rolled in here. Talk about them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Metal Militia, no, I already read him. I think we're on Justin Gordon, who's the best. Yeah, who's the best of the three centers? Could one be a Hall of Famer? Could one be a Hall of Famer? Uh, um, I'm going to say no, just because until Pouncey gets in, 
I don't think any of them are better than Pouncey. So if Pouncey isn't getting in or if Pouncey isn't in just yet, I don't think them dudes get in. Um, but in terms of the best of the three, I'm torn between JPJ and uh, Graham Barton. And the thing is uh, with JPJ, I love how he plays. I love his physicality. But at the same time, he is a shorter and more boxier. They call him SpongeBob. That's like his nickname. And when you see him, he, yeah, he looks just like SpongeBob. So he's dope. So it's like I like that. But at the same time, it's like I love the physical size that Graham Barton has. He's 6'5". You know, he's built like a tackle. But he is going to play inside. And I think he will have a lot more success now that I've went back and watched a little bit more of him. And the thing that makes him so intriguing is the size. Because he moves like a dude that can play tackle. But you're putting him in there at center. So now that kind of gives you Marquise Pouncey vibes when you talk about big, tall, big body athletic centers. Graham Barton moves extremely well. Now the knock on Graham is short arms. And he hasn't played center since his freshman year where he had five stars at it. But he was killing folk. He looked good. Well, no, I won't say he was killing folk. But he looked really good. He looked really good. So with that, you're just going off of three years of him at left tackle five games his freshman year of him at center where he looked really good but you look at his athleticism you look at his profile in terms of size speed everything that he tests stuff like that and if you cop that for a center you're like bro you're gonna feel great but you just have to believe that what you saw in them first five games from his freshman year will not only translate but will be better because if we were talking with him just strictly as a left tackle he's not in the conversation of being a first rounder but when you talk about him playing center or guard, yeah, he's in them convos. Jackson Powers Johnson, like I say, he's just the more compact version. But I think that he is the best of the three in terms of just his floor. He's ready to go right now. I feel, yeah, Jackson Powers Johnson, he starts for us as soon as he comes in here. We're not missing a beat. We're going to feel great about it. Graham Barton, he has the tools to do that. We just have not seen him play center since his freshman year. Zach Frazier, I think that he's just the smaller of the three. So it's like, all right, they all can move. They're all strong. They're all fundamentally sound technicians. But of the three, it's like that's the smallest guy. And at the league level, big speed, big athlete over little speed, little athlete. And that's kind of why I rank them like that. Uh, Sean McCartney, to those who think center isn't that important, Tell that to Jason Kelsey, yeah. Creed Humphrey, heck, even Pouncey being mm -hmm. leaders on the O-line. No, facts, man. Facts. Swear by it, baby. Um, like I said, I like it. When you invest in that position, you get a quality guy. Um, when I was in Buffalo, I had Eric Wood, pro bowler, uh, first round center, and he was the anchor of our offensive line. We came here to Marquise Pouncey, who was also a first rounder, but to an even higher extent. And it was like, man, it took it to a whole other level. So, yeah, if you have that guy, that can change everything with your offensive line. But you have to be willing to invest in it. Not everybody is as willing to invest first-round draft picks and centers. And that's part of the dilemma. But for us, it does look like we are going to be willing to do that. And unless we make a move in the next week or so, we more than likely will be investing one of those first-round picks. Or a first-round pick, excuse me in a center because we don't have one yeah yeah we need a center yeah. and it is important as dresden what do you think of wide receiver jalen polk he's solid that's the one uh out of washington yeah one of the three out of washington he's probably with the third best out there uh who's the, there's yeah who's the other guy the dunes uh dunes a mc was it mcmillan right Oh yeah, yeah. McMillan and uh, then Polk, or how'd you feel about? I think they got Polk second. Polk second and then McMillan. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't watched McMillan really. Uh, Polk. You know and what? I mixed them up. It is Adunze. Polk. Yeah, Polk is number two to me. It's it's Adunze, Polk, and then McMillan because McMillan he still gets off too. But I thought he was the third best out that group. But yeah, um, I don't nice, I don't like Polk as much yeah. as some of these other second round guys we're talking okay. about, like McConkey. Yeah. Purcell, uh, Leggett, mm -hmm. Troy Franklin. To Who me, else? when I watch like the Troy Franklin and the Jalen Polk, to me, I have the same like issue. I'm like, you're just running by people. I don't see like McConkey. It's like, yo, you gonna route that? Even Leggett to an extent, it's like I'm seeing at least 
the run after the route, stuff like that. Whereas those dudes are just, they could just go, bro. Now it's not a negative because it's kind of like watching A.D. Mitchell. You watch his tape. It's 1,400 yards, but it's verticals and deep overs. Like, how am I evaluating this? You, you, what was the cat? Uh, even the cat in Michigan, that room, Wilson, not Roman Wilson, the other cat, uh, John to blank on his name right now, but he's, hey, get you the deep ball. Just throw it up to you. Go get you one. It's like, that's dope, but that's kind of the, when we're complaining about what George Pickens was like, we want to see more. Can you add to that? Those are some of the questions. It's like, will you be able to develop past just being a vertical down the grass guy, or is that all you're going to be? Now, as we see with GP, you can still be a dope receiver like that. But if you never develop past just being a vertical and back shoulder type of guy, you are going to be limited in certain capacities. Yeah, I just didn't, from what I watched from him, I just didn't have him as highly. I think he's still like a solid second round guy, but I think yeah. I have he's him a good player, more though. towards the bottom of the list whenever you're talking about the second round receivers. Respect. Uh, Lee Govan, like Smith, don't like his cronies. <laughs> Van Jefferson, not bad. Respect, respect. Hey, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, uh, he's saying, I like Smith, but I don't like his cronies. Like, he doesn't like the players he's bringing Yeah, in. yeah. That's what I was like. I, I can get that, man. But he says he does like Van Jefferson. He said, Van Jefferson, not bad. So, respect that. Tito, good vibes. Most indeed. Keep doing your thing. The show content is always fire. Keep the good energy. No, nah, salute to you, man. We wouldn't keep that good energy. You keep the good energy, too, man. You know, we like it like that. It's better that way. Hectic. Traded down in round one for Dallas's... 27th in 2024 their 2025 first round pick and still got van pran at 27 and mims at 51 still got corley best case in my opinion i mean no that's fine wait why couldn't we get frazier but i wouldn't yeah i was just i wouldn't want someone else one of them other dudes at 27 because i think van pran i could get him later <laughs> but i mean in terms of what you were doing in terms of center tackle uh receiver i do like that but yeah I, i'm i i'm would have waited on Van Pran personally, but I do like your energy though. One of those three centers should be available at, at 27. 27. Heck yeah, heck one yeah, of them bro. Heck be. yeah. But or if not, then the, one of them quarterbacks, one of these receivers, like something had to have happened if all three of them guys go. Something had to happen, bro. Yeah. All right, that's it right now. All right, all what right. We got next? Perfect, man. So let's get to this next thing, man. Um, I'm trying to think. Do I want to go with that mark or do I want to go with the fan box? Because, see, this is the D&D. I'm trying for us to be, you know, around seven-ish. You know what I'm saying? So, let's get... You know what? We can get it. We got time. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. All right. Let's go with the fan mox. We will, we will table that in... Or the, podcast for the people. Yeah, podcast for the people. We'll hit the ESPN mock on Wednesday. All right? We'll do that there. We're going to hit the fan mox today because we do like when you guys give us your input and just some of the different names that you guys come up with. So the first one that we're going to talk about, you hit that like button on the front end as well for the fan mock drafts. But we want to talk to uh, the homie Charles Gurley, a.k.a. CJ, um, sent this mock in. He also is from uh, Dallas, Texas. No, 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 excuse me, Austin, Texas. Shout out to him. He has his two daughters, man, a six-year-old, or no, no, a one-year-old and a two-year-old, but they tap in. They watch us, man. So salute to you, you know, big dad energy. And the fact that you're rocking with the podcast and having your little ladies on that still is energy. So I definitely like that that as well man but um right here man in the first round he went with the marius mims at 51 cedric van pran at 84 devontez walker then at 98 jeremiah trotter jr then at 119 that's yep fourth then uh mason smith excuse me mason smith the d tackle out of lsu then at 178 tyke smith in the sixth round safety out of georgia and then at 195 christian boyd who we talked about coming in on a visit uh to the steelers uh the d tackle out of northern iowa low-key this is kind of like what my man just put in the yeah. super chat just kind of reversed it with mims and pran um Honestly, if it falls like that, where it's Mims, Van Pran, uh, Tez Walk, uh, Walker, I don't hate that. I think that that, to me, is at least better value than Van Pran in that first round. I, I, I didn't like that one. But, yeah, Mims in the first, you know, I, I like Mims, man. That's going to be my right tackle. Van Pran, I still think that's a little bit early for me, for him, at 51. But if all the other guys are gone, which could be the case then we are forced and this is what we have to understand coming into this draft if we don't pick up a center ahead of time 
you either got to get in in round one or this could, you know, be how the board falls to us. Uh, Tez Walker, we know it's down to grass, man, speed. Jeremiah Trotter, productive as heck, inside linebacker. Definitely feel good about that. Yeah, I like this one. And Christian Boyd, low key, man. I like the the, the late round interior big body D lineman from the small school, baby. I, I, I ain't hating it now. Yeah, I think that's a good pick. Yeah. He went heavy Georgia. Nothing Three Georgia that, guys though. in this draft. Bring it, he bringing the band back together, bro. I think Jeremiah, where you're getting Jeremiah Trotter's a steal. Mm-hmm. I think where you're get, getting Devontae Walker's a steal, too. Yeah, I was about to say, third. 84, that's clean. Yeah. I mean, that, that might be around where he goes, but I, I, I think he's got some upside. I yeah. think this last year and how things were handled with his eligibility kind of hurt him. He would have had a lot better numbers. Yeah. They say in B+. Plus. I don't like the C- Cedric Van Pran, though, man. Okay. Because... I feel like if you're picking him in the second round like that, 51, you're ex- you're expecting him to be the starter. But at the same time, there is a very legitimate scenario where Jackson Powers Johnson, Zach Frazier, and Graham Barton could all three be gone before 51. Yeah, so that's why I guess I don't like this. I, yeah. I just pick a center in the first round and set it and forget it, unless you can get one of those three in the second round, unless you can guarantee yourself that somehow, some yeah. way, which you can't. So right. that, that leaves a little bit up for risk. So you're pigeonholed to yeah, consider I, in the first I'm round right not, now. Like Mims, I love the upside for him. I'm, I'm, yeah. I am really concerned about the injuries with him, though. Respect. I prefer Latham more the uh, dude out of Oregon State right All now. All right, we on the same page. Those guys, to me, are better players. Yeah. But those guys are also projected to go earlier. So that was the whole thing. But, yeah, if Latham... Fuaga, so if neither Felice, of those guys are there, him, yeah. I just I'd prefer center over Mims. Yeah, and then figure out the rest of the draft. Okay. So I I'm not gonna give this one as high of a grade. Not not a big fan. Probably okay. like a C plus. Respect respect. The Van Pram one. That's that's the lightning rod right now. But I respect it. Shout out to C J Charles Gurley for that one right there. Man, one time for the coach. Next. What are you giving that? To me, man, I, I was cool with that. I. I like, a B was fine because the Van Pran element of it is like, yo, do I love it? No. But if that's the only part that made me feel uncomfortable, it's like, yo, I'm, I'm still getting a center. Yeah, so I think they like, get pretty good case, value yeah. uh, late in this draft with yeah. their picks. Walker, Trotter. Let yeah, me put that back up real quick. Mason yeah. Smith, Boyd. Because, like, I like Tyke Smith. I like Mason Smith. You even touched my heart a little bit with the late round D-tackle because he's a small school cat. So that was for me, man. But it's like, I got me a linebacker. I got me a speedy receiver that can take the top off the defense. And I got me a, a high-end prospect in terms of Amarius Mims, who I'm pairing with Broderick Jones, while also bringing Van Pran. And these are three guys that won a championship the last time they were on the field together. So that's the part where I like it. So that's why I say a B. Yeah. But like I said, shout out to CJ, man. All right, so the next one. Is naughty or nice? All right, shout out to naughty or nice. And uh, let me see, naughty or nice said uh, one of the focal points was he was trying to focus on the trenches, focusing on stopping the run. He wanted a physical corner. He said a smaller receiver, but built more like a running back for a true weapon. And he needed an opportunity to trade Dan Moore along with a late flyer on a physical receiver. All right, <laughs> so. For naughty or nice, he went JC Latham in the first round. So at does 20th. he trade Dan Moore in this thing? I'm assuming so. Like, do we get an extra pick or something? I'm not sure. He didn't clarify that, but he went JC Latham at 20, Zach Frazier at 51, Jeremiah Trotter at 84. I ain't gonna lie, I like this already. Kyrie Jackson at 98, Malik Washington. They calling him Young Debo Samuel. 178 when Javon or Javon Foster. Offensive tackle out of Missouri. And then at 195, Cornelius Johnson. That was the cat. Yeah, the big body dude. But well, he's going to take you down. Uh, take you down the grass, man. I ain't going to lie, bro. I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot because I think these players are better than the players on the last one. I like J.C. Latham way more than Amarius Mims. I like Zach Frazier way more than Cedric Van Pran. I get Jeremiah tried in both scenarios. Kyrie Jackson. Long corner man, not afraid to contest the ball, could play inside, could play outside. Malik Washington, tough as nails, kind of undersized, plays with a chip on his shoulder receiver. I don't like the fact that he went to UVA because I think that that school is just eh. And, you know, JMU runs that. You know how we do. But outside of that, he did get off in that game against JMU. So I did get a chance to see him. I like him. Um, Javon Foster, I don't like the fact that, 
you know. Well, actually, I'm not tripping because I already got J.C. Latham. So he's my flyer. He's my late round dude. So if I was moving on from Dan Moore, at least I have me some depth. So it's not just the J.C. Latham, Bradley Jones, and good luck train. Um, but at the same time, I don't have to move on from Dan Moore either with this. And then, like I said, with Cornelius Johnson, doesn't hurt to add another receiver into the room. But I think that our production would be coming from Malik Washington as he would be contesting to be in the slot. But his style yeah. of slot receiver is different than the style of slot receiver that we're anticipating with the Calvin Austin or with the Quez Watkins, who are more burners down yep. the grass. Yep. He is definitely more of that Debo Samuel. He's more of that Steve Smith that get him around the line of scrimmage. He's going to tough you and he's going to make you bully ball. But he is not big. He's Yeah, you. I mean, you know what he looked like, bro. But yeah, I no, like he's, he's very though. short. Yeah. Uh, I had a really awesome year with Virginia last year. Yeah. Uh, getting his one year there after spending the early parts of his college career over in Northwestern. Mm hmm. I like this draft. Uh, I'm bummed lot, we didn't get a receiver early. That was my Kyrie Jackson. Do we, you know, do we pick up a receiver in free agency if we go this route? This is my question to you. If we, we pick flip up a DJ flop, Shark or an Odell you, or something. So, so you see how we did corner receiver. We did Kyrie Jackson and Malik Washington. If instead of it being Kyrie Jackson, we went receiver at 98. DB at 119, would that change it for you? I don't know. Because it depends on the players. Because now I'm even thinking with Kyrie Jackson, would it have been smarter to go with the FSU corner? Ooh, Jerry and Jones. Because I feel like Jerry and Jones can play for us day one. I don't know if I'm seeing that with Kyrie Jackson yeah. like that. He's outside. Mm -hmm. But he can so then, play on the inside, though. Then you bump Dante Jackson in the slot. Yeah, what do you do there? I think for those, I like his upside, though. I mean, I like my, the thought mm -hmm. of just having him, Corey Trice, and JPJ. Yeah, and just, hell, we got these avatar yeah. corners out there. I'm like, yo, that's, he's a little bit thinner frame-wise, though. That was my only concern in terms of putting him in the slot. Because, as we said, it's not just about the speedier, quick, and shifty guys. You also have to have run support. So... That makes it a little bit more physical on a guy like him, and he is, like you said, just thinner. Yeah, but I like this one. Though, I bro. like this better than the last yeah, I like one. This one. Probably B plus. Yeah, Gonna I get the last one a B. So, like, I think we should have taken. All right, actually, here's how I would configure it better. Mm -hmm. I would take the receiver at 84 instead of Jeremiah Trotter. Okay. If Corley's there, I take him. Or if I mean, yeah. the one dude just got. Devontae Walker in the yeah, last mock draft at 84. 84. So if you had Quez Walker at 84, this is an A for you. Yeah, and then maybe... And then switch the linebacker out at, what is it, 119? Uh, or are you keeping as is now? I think I'm Just taking... double dip, triple dip I'm on taking, receiver then. No, I'm taking Jerry and Jones at 98. Okay. And then 119. Yeah, maybe we stick with Malik Washington, him or Luke McCaffrey, something like that. Yeah. And then don't touch Cornelius Johnson then. You win a draft out of there. Uh, give me a D tackle. Yeah, respect. Give me some D line depth. Maybe a safety, 178 or yeah. 195 too. Okay. Yeah, I basically just reconfigured his whole draft. <laughs> but I like this. We like, I, I'm I like saying this one B a lot, plus. bro. Yeah I, yeah. yeah, I like this one a lot, Nadia. Nice. Look, if I get the last one a B, I'm not even going to hold you. I think to me, man, um, I love the value – in those top three picks. So that's why I'm going to go with the A because J.C. Latham, to me, is top 15, top 10 talent. So if I'm getting that at 20, I feel great about that. Zach Frazier, you know we needed a center. I have me a guy that I feel really, really good about, man. Um, and then Jeremiah Trotter, man, another willing and able body, a younger body, man, to add into that linebacker room to not just compete with a Mark Robinson, not just to compete with Atlanta Roberts, but ultimately, man, hopefully we get even more younger and athletic with the him and Patrick Queen at some yeah. point, man. You know, that'd yep. be kind of like the long-term goal. So, yeah, man, I like this a lot, though, man. And like I said, I, I, as much as I don't like UVA, I like Malik Washington, bro. Watching him last year and then going back and watching some more of his tape from uh, this year, man. Yeah, I like what he saw. I like what I saw from him, man. All right. So we got two left, two left. Shout out to the homie Yu Young. Y'all already know what time it is. One time for the culture, <laughs> Yu Young. I like your energy, baby. 
first round, he went Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon. But then after that, Deke, he, he did business with a familiar, with, with, with our cousin now. You know our cousins. Our, our cousins up, up the road in the 716. So we traded our um, third round pick, 98th overall, and our 2025 second round pick, along with our third round pick for this year, 98th overall, to the Buffalo Bills for their what's, what's, first round pick, round 28th overall. Yeah, so it's both of our third round picks this year and then next year's second round pick for the Bills first pick uh in the draft 28th overall are you doing that if you're the Bills uh no not this well actually <laughs> they could and they still come right back into the first round because they still going to be loaded up with like a ton of just like thirds so, yeah so yeah you're, you're just gonna pair all them you're thirds losing and your first up. round pick and get a couple thirds you get a next yeah. year's second <laughs> yeah I'll do that if you guys want to do that right. I would do that deal in a heartbeat yeah. <laughs> I mean they Bro, to an extent, it's like, man, they got all types of stuff. I don't know who they're thinking on, man. But um, in this scenario, it's like for the Bills, the only reason I, I don't think the Bills would do it is because they're going to have to take a receiver in the first round. But at the same time, when you load up on a ton of seconds and thirds, if you package all that together, eventually it's going to end to a first. Now, to what level is that first? But it's like, yo, does it matter if it took you four thirds, four third round picks or a uh, second round pick, you know what I mean, to move yeah, up. It's like, I feel like it might get just it, be smarter to yeah. stay with the first then. I'm with if you, bro. If you're going to yeah. repackage <laughs> your draft picks to try to get back in the first, why don't you just stay there? Yeah, but I'm like, but I would do but this depending deal. on like where you're trying to move to, that's what I'm implying. It's like, I don't know where they're trying to move to. If they're trying to go into a top 10, if they're fine at 28, or do they want to get to 15? All of that, depending on if they say, well, yeah, we can take two thirds in the second, and we can pick this third with one of the other thirds that we just picked up, and now we can still hop right back and go we want, and we still you get got, an additional you, third. You probably have to trade your yeah. future first then. Right, it's something. That. <laughs> but I'm like, who knows? But that's what we said. It's trade, bro. So that's that. And then from there, we went and got uh, A.D. Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas. Then after that, man, went and got the left tackle out of Yale, Kyron. Um, yeah. Ameg Daj. Ameg Ameg Daj. Shout out to Kyron and Megadaji. There we go. And then from there in the fourth round, man, went with Leonard Taylor. Big body. D tackle. Out of the U. Then in the sixth round, Luke McCaffrey. And then to end it at 195, MJ Devonshire. Pitt, cornerback. All right. If we're being real about it, uh, I like it. I wasn't a fan of giving up the trade stuff, but... I ain't tripping. I like it. Because you got Jack Spowers Johnson. So that's my center. Got me a speed, big, big. I got fast, 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 fast Texas receiver, man. So definitely like that. Um, in terms of the tackle spot with Kyron, I don't know. I just, that, that I don't know. I think he's a dope player. I like him. But I don't know. I just, I ain't like that one all the way. Yeah, that's about yeah. where he might go. He might yeah. go middle, late second, early third. How great yeah. are you feeling about him starting day one? It opens up the door. Like it if, does. You, if you run, if you want to put him at right tackle, yeah, it opens up the door for you moving Broderick to left, and you maybe just have him compete with yeah. Dan Moore. It does. But that was the one for me where I was just kind of like, all right. I mean, I don't hate that part. Um, Luke McCaffrey, we already know, man. Good player, really good player. Pedigree, all that good stuff. MJ Devonshire. But, yeah, man, I don't know, man. It just – I feel like usually in these drafts, the third-round picks were getting good players. So I just felt like a drop-off almost. Like, dang, I don't know. I'm just missing something. But the top two picks are heavy-handed. So it's like Jax Powers, Johnson, A.D. Mitchell, those are dope players. But that was kind of my dilemma. Yeah, I love the trade. I think yeah. we get a steal in that trade. Maybe I just don't like the way we pick the players afterwards. Yeah, if you're telling me we it, have the twentieth, the twenty eighth, and the fifty first pick, then yeah, to do some damage. I like Jackson Power Johnson, but you probably could have got him at twenty eight, or at I'm least saying. one of those yeah. centers at twenty eight. Who was there at twenty? At twenty. Yeah. What was your who, boy looking who like? Who could have? Who could have you gotten? Like, was Brian Thomas there at twenty? Yeah. Instead of Adonai Mitchell. Like, is Mitchell's cool. I, I I don't know how high I am on him, though. Mm -hmm. The speed's nice. The speed's good, yeah. 
But like I said, with these Texas receivers, they, they don't feel that polish. And not, not saying mm-hmm. they have to be. Like I, I think they're deserving of their prospects of yeah. where they're getting looked at right now, of like late first, early second. And then yeah, your same thing with the tackle. I I just think I would have picked different, different players. players. <laughs> that's all. I, got different I, people, I really bro. like the trade. <laughs> I like it. I would. That's. I like I would Luke, I, people, bro. I, I like the. I like the late picks too. The Leonard last Williams, two. Yeah. McCaffrey and Devonshire. I oh, like yeah, those yeah. picks. Shout out to yeah. I think those are solid picks. It's a weird one. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, man. Kyron and Leonard, bro. I just wasn't feeling the picks. I think those are the two for me. They, I just was not feeling them, and I don't know why. It's nothing against them. I think they have good tape. I just they weren't my cup of tea, purposely, bro. So yeah, that was that was my. But shout out to you, you young. I like what, what the people say. Let me see what they say. I'm about thinking. It, bro. C is just a weird one. I give it a C. I might go B. You give it a B. All right. Yeah, because you're still getting Jackson Powers Johnson, and AD Mitchell. You're yeah. getting your. But how good do you feel about receiver. AD Mitchell? Because for me, it's like I like AD Mitchell. Do I like him as the 28th receiver? I need I to see what like the board Leggett. looked like, bro. I yeah, like, I like Troy Franklin. <laughs> right. Who else was on the board, and bro? You could maybe even get those guys round two. Yeah, McCarthy. Yeah. Who else was on the board, bro? Like that's what I need to see. I like it, but who else is on the board? Right. Yeah. Yeah, twenty. If Brian, I, I would. Yeah. I would go Brian Thomas first if you're thinking receiver yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. If he was available, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if he was there. Yeah. Brian Thomas, then center, and then at fifty-one, maybe you could still take this guy at fifty-one. Yeah, yeah but definitely a different receiver. I think that'd have me better. But shout out to you, though. You're young. All right, so we're going to get to this last one. Then we got a couple supers. Then we're going to wrap this thing going up. All right. But shout out to the homie Farron Bradford. One time for the culture. One time for the culture. That was probably the most unique one I've seen yet. I would agree. Although the last couple we've done, there's been some crazy trades. But this one's one's actually kind of realistic in that it's not like three different trades and we got like 12 picks out here. I don't think that trait happens, but just the thought of like, oh, maybe we get back into the first. No, that trade's not happening. Actually, the more I the more I look at it, it's very unrealistic. Forget what I said. That <laughs> no, there's no way we're gonna have pick twenty and twenty eight and then still have our and second round pick. Gonna, yeah, I'm like that's there's a no lot, way. bro. We heavy handed, but I like it if it works out like that. But uh, this one, like I said, man, is from Farron Bradford and a little bit of his uh, thought process. He says, Lim- uh, "Limmer" in terms of Bo Limmer. Uh, says he has a decent senior bowl, but the only time that he really saw him struggle was against Tavondre Sweat, who obviously we know is a really good player. But he said that um he likes all these guys to fit what we are trying to do. But to be honest, he didn't know who the last pick was. He just picked some random guy, but everyone else he feels fits the identity we are trying to revive. All right. So for those that are audio only, he went Amarius Mims in the first round. In the second round, he traded Isaiah Loudermilk. Our third round pick, 84th overall, and our 2025 second round pick to the New England Patriots for their 34th overall second round pick. And with that, he picked Troy Franklin. I like this already. All right, wide receiver out of Oregon. Then at 51 overall, went with Kamari Lassiter, the corner out of Georgia. Physical, physical. Then at 98th overall, Bo Lemmer, the center out of Arkansas. At 119, went with Elijah Jones teammate of coach tomlin's son dino tomlin as well wide receiver at boston college and then in the sixth round 178 went with darius masu og thumping line back on the interior part and then marcus harris man uh athletic d lineman um i liked it i like the mems i like the franklin i think i'm going a different corner though I think I would have went a different corner. You I want like to see. Lasseter. No, I like Lasseter. I just wanted to see who was available, though. That's my only thing. But I do like it. Like, I ain't tripping on it. Um, Bo Limmer, if I'm picking between him and Van Pran, I think is, you know, I think Pran is the better. <sighs> Let me see. How do I explain this? I feel like Pran, to me, is the better athlete of the two. But I do like Limmer. I think Limmer is still another one of those high floor guys, man. Fundamentals. Like he's going to, once he gets attached to you, he is going to do a good job of making sure that you don't come off of that. You know what I mean? He gets the second level good. But yeah, so I'm like, I, I don't have like a hard stance one way or the other versus, you know, Limmer versus Pran. But I do think Pran is the better player 
But both of them dudes, like I said, are kind of what what in that vein to me, man. We're basically doing the Kendrick Green experience yes. with yeah. this again. Uh, yeah. And I'm not a fan Because he's going to have to start. Yeah. But at least he is a true center, though. So I do feel better about Limmer right. than Green in this and scenario. And even Van Pran. I- I'm with and that. And they both have size. That was the problem with Green. Green was technical. Green had speed. The problem with Green, he was little. So he got bullied. You would watch him just get walked back because he's too small. Limmer, Van Pran, all of those guys, right? Frazier, any of these centers that we've talked about, they all have size. So you're not going to run into that type of issue. We're talking like, are these guys going to be athletic enough? We're saying, can you pull? Or when you get into the second level, are you able to actually get an athletic Patrick Queen type linebacker? Is he going to be foot fake? You have you looking crazy out there. That's, you know, what we're looking at these guys at. But I think all of those guys will be better than when we had Kendra Green just because of the size part of it. I think if you don't get one of those three centers, I'm going to be knocking your mock draft. Oh, 100%. Respect on that, baby. Respect. I like Franklin. I like Lasseter. I, I'm skeptical on Mems, too. I can understand I it, bro. Like, if you drafted Mems mm-hmm. but were able to get Frazier instead yeah. of Franklin in the second round, fine. And then you take the receiver instead of Lasseter there. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes it a little bit better to me. You can't mess on one of those centers. I, it's just where I'm at right now. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think we can ignore that. I mean, that is where we are until Omar does something different. Yeah. So I'm going to give this, like, a C plus, too. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go back to the last two? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Without it up, man. All right. So that was Fan Bradford. All right. Yule I, Young. I just want to see which one I think is the best for today. Yule batch. Young gave us Jackson Powers Johnson, uh, A.D. Mitchell, Kyron, the tackle out of uh, Yale, Leonard Taylor, Luke McCaffrey, MJ Davenshire. Then you had Naughty or Nice, gave us Latham, Frazier, Trotter, Kyrie Jackson at 98th overall, Malik Washington. Yeah, that might I be. I like the, this one. That might yeah. be. The, I think the middle two are my two favorite. Yeah, the Naughty or Nice and Yule Young. Okay. For me, yeah, I think Naughty or Nice was probably my favorite for today. Shout I think that's Nadia the one nice, I man. do have graded the highest. Yeah. Shout I think I have that nice. as a B plus. I have Yo Yong's as a B. Yeah. And then the other two I have C pluses. I like it. I was a harsh grader today. Hey man, it's like this sometimes, bro. If y'all was digging your mocks, hit the like button one final time and don't forget to subscribe either. All right. Um, think we got a couple of supers, man. We'll run through these real quick. And yeah, man, super duper gold is, you know, I have like five minutes, you know? Yeah. We good. Thank you. Yeah, we got a couple left. Thank you. Famously amazing TV gave us 99 cents. Shout out to you, Famously Amazing TV. Respect. And hopefully the show is Famously Amazing on TV at one point. Yeah. Or on YouTube. DKB17. Yeah. Love the late start. First time catching a whole live. Usually tune in the next day while I walk my mail route. Thoughts right. on Makai Becton for us. Yo, respect to you, man. Walking the mail route, man. Major love. Major love. And shout out to you being able to catch a live with us today, too, man. We definitely appreciate you, whether you catch it live or if you catch it on the replay. We always appreciate you. Man, I'm all for Makai Becton. Um, big pedigree, big time athlete. Um, looking for some redemption. We know he got banged up while he was in New York. But to me, man, I'm all for that because it's another willing, capable, high-end talent that is still on the younger side. And we just need to see, can it actually be what we think it was when it was coming out of college, man? Because coming out, that was supposed to be a dog, dog, man. Kind of, you know, anchor off this line. But he's just been banged up. Yeah, I think it would be a fine addition. Yeah. Nothing and, wrong and with Inexpensive it. also. Yeah. Yeah. AJ Martinez, yo, one more shout out. Michelle will always be my number one and only. Deke, leave the plumber's truck at home and stop laying so much pipe. LOL. Oh, God. So that's what he was getting at with See? the comment. I got, yep, yep. Did he dip? Mm. Let's go, AJ. <laughs> Love you all. Have a great day. Appreciate your wives. Definitely appreciate the wives. Absolutely. Love your wives. Love your significant others. All right. And then for the ladies in the chat, we know there's some ladies in here. Shout out to, you know, we had Steelers Girl, not. OG Steelers girl. We got new Steelers girl in here. She oh, was really? rocking with it. Remember, she shouted us out. We called her out. We was like, yo, you going to. Oh, I thought it was, it was like, was 517. 
No, that was a different Steelers girl. This is yeah, this is a whole new Steelers girl. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. She was like, yo, shout out too, bro. So yeah, yeah, you know, so we got Leah Warren, you know, we got Steelers Girl 517, though. You know, we got mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's East Lansing. That's Michigan. You know what I mean? So we got peoples. We 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 holding it down. But I think this one was 818, if I remember correctly. All right. But you know, yeah. So for the ladies, y'all, y'all, yeah. Love you. Love, love you guys too. Yeah. Appreciate you guys, man. Yeah. So the ladies appreciate you guys. For the dudes, appreciate your ladies. Y'all know what time we on over here. Hey. Yeah. Damon Brown, is there anyone from JMU the Steelers need to be watching Jaylen for? Jalen Green. Jalen Green. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say it again, man. I went back and watched even more tape on my past Russia down from the JMU purple and gold. Um, the big reason why you haven't heard a lot more of him was because he did get injured at the, it's like the mid to end way point of last year. He got hurt in the ninth game. Problem was, it was ACL. So, has he recovered? Yes. Um... Is he still moving around? He's good. Yes. But at the same time, is he still in the heart <clears throat> of that recovery? Yes. Now he's to the back end of it. So that's the part that you like. But there are those type of questions on him. But if you cut his tape on, man, this is a dude that in nine games was leading the league or not leading the league, leading the nation um, in sacks, led the nation in sacks, 15 of them uh, this year. 20 tackles for loss, like I said, in nine games, man. So he would definitely be the guy that uh, I would say to check out, man. So, yeah. I am prime. Fellas, the Jay Simmons rumors are ramping up. <laughs> Must be that CTESPN report. Hey, man, you Getting know the people. I go, bro. <laughs> but I think we need to go after BA. Spend some money on the O, if not, possible trade back into the first for a receiver. Who's BA? Um, bring back you? Bruce Arians. That's what I was like. Who are you talking about? We need to bring back BA. BA. Am I missing something? Brandon Ayuk. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Brandon Ayuk. That's who he is. Um, Brandon, are you gonna cause more than Justin Simmons though? I am prime probably likes that Yo Young mock draft then because yeah. that's exactly what happened. If not, yeah. possible trade back into the first for a receiver. That's what uh, yeah. Yo Young did. Yeah, that's that then. That's definitely that. I like it. I am prime. I definitely like that. But yeah, it was, who is this? Brian, uh, Brandon Ayuk. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean we've talked about that multiple times. Second round pick, I ain't hating it. I ain't hating it. Uh, then how much are we paying them? That's the, that's the next part of it. Yeah, I kind of like 20, the trade back in the first million? round. Trade back in the first round is cheaper that. though. Trade back in the first round is cheaper. But do you believe in dudes coming in at the late part of the first round? Along with, do you believe that GP is going to match? I like a lot IUC. of these receivers. And are you and is IU? I mean, is GP matching IU this year? Because he's going to have to have some type of – make sure you're raising that up. If we're not going to bring an IU, you want to at least make sure that – Oh, yeah, I think you yeah. can. Yeah, I think Pickens can for sure. Yeah. yeah, any of these receivers, man. I mean, we all have our preferences, but you take any of these dudes that are projected, you know, top 15 in the class. Yeah. Projected to go in like that second round range. I have some decent, decent faith, and especially the team that's drafting him is us and yeah. we're pretty damn good at drafting receivers yeah. i would agree got a rust here yeah I'll, as long as we get that center man i'm gonna keep saying it yeah it's boring but we really need that center going back to what sean mccartney said too like people don't think it's that important like i don't know man we, we've got to see how things have been looking without pouncy over these last like five years and it's, it's been a little rough man. mason cole yeah was solid his first year with us i think it was his first year right that 2022 Mm -hmm. he was solid but it's just different when you get that guy there that you count on year and year out changes the whole dynamic of it bro yeah i think it's important yeah that's something our franchise has prided ourselves in historically the course of our history get a good center in there webby damani yeah Jeff Harding's mm-hmm. pouncy. Go down that list, man. Seriously. We've had a guy. Hall of Fame type guy, typically. Yeah. Yep. I like it, man. I like it. All right. Well, that will do it. We did catch up on all the supers, and I did butcher it. It wasn't still a girl 8018. It was still a girl 808. Shout out. So there we go. That's the whole crew. So there Wait, we, we got one more, actually. Oh, we, oh who else? What, what happened? What I missed? We got... Hold on. Where'd it go? I think it's Irene Knight. Irene Knight. Irene Knight. Let's go. All right. It says, uh, 
I'm a female too. Yeah. Let's go. Shout out to you, Irene Knight. There we go. So Irene Knight in the building. Yeah. Steelers Girl 808 in the building. Leah Warren in the building. Steelers Girl 517 in the building. Let me think. I know we missing some. I feel like I'm missing some, but we know them the ones ones right there. So shout out to the news and shout out to the regulars and shout out because Steelers Girl is not new. 808, she's not new, but she don't catch the lives like that. So shout out. So we good. So there we go, man. So yeah. So salute, salute, salute. Um, but yeah, other than that, baby, I think we good, man. That will do it for today because we did cause start a little bit later because of the solar clip. So hopefully y'all can still see. Everybody's still good. All right. And uh, if not, I'm praying for y'all. All right. But um, yeah, prayers up to Rod Dollars. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rod, if you still seeing spots, man, good luck, bro. <laughs> Holla at D. D got a LASIK guy. He might get you right, all right? But um, other than that, man, that will do it for today, man. So hopefully y'all enjoyed today's show. And uh, yeah, man, we'll be back in the sound like how we always are. But either way, hit that like button on the way out. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, baby. Peace.